Okay, so uh, we're asking uh, dumb uh, SEO questions. Uh, each week we uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, dumb SEO questions uh, community on Google+. Um, with us tonight we have uh, Dan Ignugraha. Uh, Dan, um, is, uh, he describes himself as an average coder. He's actually the best programmer in the world. Um, also, Tim Kappa is with us. Uh, he uh, um, operates a, a website in the UK. Uh, it's onlineownership.com. He's proud to call himself a, a, an SEO, and uh, he's also a conversion rate optimization specialist. Uh, Adelaide's leading SEO is Tony McCreeth. Uh, he runs a, a website in Adelaide, Website Advantage, and. Um, uh, we're a little bit short-handed tonight uh, because, uh, well, for a number of reasons, but um, I'm sure that um, we'll uh, um, cover it with, with who we have. This is a, uh, the first question is a question from uh, Tessa Bernacki, Bernacki, I should say. Um, it's titled Link Impact on Ranking. Um, Tessa begins, um, big weekend for the SEO world. I started noticing ranking drops last week around Thursday. I noticed the company I work for now has a lot of links um, to m.biz. I think she might mean a lot of links from m.biz. Um, it has been said in the past that these do not negatively impact SEO, but I'm thinking that is incorrect now. Um, uh, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, definitely been a big week with uh, Penguin and uh, a lot of people uh, saying the uh, negative SEO seems to work and and has been uh, hitting people. It hasn't hit any of the shop save sites, but then again, we're, we're, we're so close to the bottom anyway that... Um, I don't suppose I can fit this back down any further. I saw in the uh, Google forums there was the usual thing of people saying negative SEO and then the uh, uh, top contributors replying it doesn't exist. So there's still that kind of argument going on. Uh, yeah, there, 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 there's no um, accounting for, for, for fools and idiots. Um, there are just so many of them out there. Um, some people shouldn't be allowed to breed. <laughs> and I think there are some on both sides. Quite often the person complaining has obviously been doing stuff. Uh, but then if, if you discount every single case of negative SEO saying that I assume it's you, then you can deny everything forever. Well, in that um, in that uh, uh, Google Penguin um, uh, <coughs> paper the other day by Gon Gon, oh, I, I forget his name. I'll dig it out now. Um, he saw a couple of sites that got dinged, and they were still. They were still being, you know, a, a, a lot of their links were still affected by that Kumar directory scam thing, um, which, you know, I, <laughs> that's been around for a while. So, um, you know, Google should have figured that one out, but it still appears that some sites are affected negatively by it. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't know a true a true negative SEO uh, uh, attack, and I think we've said this before quite a few times. Um, on a small site, you know, just a small local business site uh, where everyone kind of in in the com in sort of in the competitive market on that for that search query is probably let's say an average of about 400 odd links, something like that is quite easy to take down. A big company site. Um, you know, who the hell is going to undertake a negative SEO attack on them? Because that's going to take take them literally years 
as well as hundreds of thousands because a negative SEO attack on a large site needs patterns and one X runner blast on it with 30,000 links in one month when nothing else appears will, will I believe be you know looked at and Google will be able to pick that up but if someone did a sustained attack regularly on a monthly basis varying it between a couple of thousand crap ones and a couple of thousand anchor text and a couple of thousand of this over a sustained period of time you would then create the pattern for Google to for Google to believe that this is not a one-off negative SEO attack that this is actually um, created by the company itself and there and then I, in, uh, I believe Google would not be able to distinguish and just hit it. Um, so yeah, you know, like Tony said, Google still still has the oh it doesn't exist or well no they have admitted it but it's like oh it's very difficult and we can pick up these patterns and yeah, yeah right you know because there are cases where you see a site uh, which is quite clearly and they're very few and far between because let's admit it. A, you know, when, when webmasters come along and say, oh, um, I've sustained a negative SEO attack, and you look at some of that, and then you can actually trace it back, and then you find the order on, on you know, you, you find an order hanging out somewhere or them asking a question on a forum, where can I buy backlinks? And it's like, yeah, right, mate, come on. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's things like that. You know, <laughs> yes, just just be honest with yourself but yeah you know if you've got a problem with a, with a domain like that just whack it in your, in, into your um, disavow and, and move on yeah I see uh, on uh, the community the SEA questions community on Google Plus we had a, an answer from Greg Barker he said uh, we disavow any junk domains like m.biz that suddenly appear with dozens or hundreds of links they're easy to find in Google Webmaster Tools by running the most recent links report. Better to be safe than sorry. And uh, his thoughts were echoed by uh, Blade S on the community. He said uh, he quoted John Mueller from Google saying, uh, usually we can recognize this kind of duplication, but if you want to be absolutely sure that they're not counted, then adding them to a disavow file is generally relatively easy to do. Um, I love John, but I don't think he's ever actually gone to the physical pain of, of compiling a disavow dis file. Um, okay, so uh, let's say that uh, Tessa Banaki's question uh, is answered. And well, uh, the next disavow subject, I've just spent five hours uh, going through my backlinks, doing, uh, redoing my disavows. And it is painful, and, it, and I'm glad I'm here now. <laughs> it's physically painful, and it, it is. Um, um, it's just continuously repetitious um, uh, RSI-inducing um, pain. Yeah. And anyway, then, uh, and a now, lot of the stuff. But as they say, as he says there, a better safe than sorry. Uh, I got so many websites that just do website statistics. Or a new one was a post on Moz has been duplicated all over the web and it happened to have a link to my website. So deciding whether I get rid of the duplicates or not. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's not nice to do, but uh, better safe than sorry. Okay. I see Dan is telling me I'm, I'm um, running the wrong question, but uh, mate, all I did was click um, the next question. So if you could sort it out so that uh, Tim and Tony can see the same as I see, um, we'll all be happy. Um, so uh, the, the question number two I have. Um, um, okay, so Dan is saying the second one is the correct question. Are you seeing the same one as me on qu question two, Tim? I am. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, Saurabh Rawat asks, are no follow links from popular sites good for ranking? 
Uh, Sorab says, uh, uh, please suggest to me, um, are, are links on popular sites or high quality sites like Wikipedia, Moz, etc., are they good for, for ranking uh, for SEO purposes? Right, so, uh, so, so, Reb. Okay, I just wish you, you people, uh, I just wish people would stop, you know, going, you know, just forget about thinking about ranking in terms of a no follow link on a, on a popular site. The question is to this, right, if you were able to get listed and a link coming out of Wikipedia, Moz, um, CNN, uh, The Times, Huffington Post, would you say to them, no, actually, don't link to me if you're going to no follow it? <laughs> no. The point is, is one, it's building brand awareness. So you've got to forget, you know, you, you, you've got to, yes, links, um, you know, work in terms of ranking, okay. But the point is also, is you, you are trying to build a brand, a business, uh, you know, online. And if the only time you're thinking of is, right, I'm going to get a .gov little PR6 link on this page, right, which has got nothing to do with me, two people a year go and look at that site, right, what actual good is that link going to do to you for your business and, 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 and for your reputation? Nothing, but a no-follow link on Wiki, um, Mars, CNN, The Times, Huffington, um, you know, w whatever the case may be, or you know, and and in other, you know, specific sites related to your to 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 your genre, that is what is going to one be of beneficial to you, whether it's no-follow or not, purely based on the fact that one, it'll drive traffic. Two people will will see it, equate it, and understand it, and and you know you're building your business online. So you know, forget whether it's a no follow link or a follow link. If it makes sense, if you have the opportunity to get it onto there, to build you know traffic brand business, do it. Forget about no follow and follow. Unless it's really crap and you want to know follow everything. <laughs> yeah, if it's, the no follow is only affecting page rank, which is just one signal of 200 uh, or whatever, however many there are. And you've got to think of uh, the other things Google's looking at uh, nowadays with uh, uh, things like co citation, co occurrence. There's uh, other signals that they're using that they can still use, even if it's no followed. Uh, and as Tim saying, like, it's, it's the people. So, uh, like, social media links are generally no follow, and quite a lot of them are hidden from Google. But they still have value because they create an audience, and more and more people learn about your product or what your, your website. And those, in turn, might get you other stuff that helps you rank it. Uh, yeah, don't don't focus on no follow. Focus on getting good links. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Tony. So, so to sum up, uh, um, the, the simple answer for Sorab is uh, no, because uh, no follow links um, are simply that they're not followed by uh, the um, uh, Googlebot, and so they simply cannot affect um, ranking. All right, uh, our next question is a local citations question. It's from E. Dieter Martin, um, and uh, he asks, uh, um, the latest Moz.com Moz study ranks number and quality of citations at number seven. Half the rank of number one, uh, which would be city, uh, state in landing page title. Oh, city state in landing page title. Now, are there any studies or even just an educated guess uh, how the traffic you get from uh, better search rankings compares to the traffic traffic you get 
from just being listed on one of those sites. And I mean both, a traffic to the site and just folks who call the business or walk into the store. Um, there's certainly a, a non-trivial number of website visitors and customers coming in through Yelp and other sites without ever having used Google or Bing. I would doubt that, um, that they, they haven't used Google or Bing. Um, most people before they walk into a store would uh, research online first. Would that be a fair comment? I don't know. I'm just because uh, I've never, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a mozzie. So I, um, because some of the stuff they produce is diabolical. Um, so I'm just trying to understand what he says. So in this report, um, the quality of citations. So I mean, he's talking local citations from local businesses, um, and I'm supposed. If he said yeah, Yelp, I suppose he's also talking about um, directories as such. Is half the weight of a ranking of rank number one city state in the landing page title. Um, well, there's there's two things here. Um, so what I what I'm trying to understand is so number one is basically having the, your city and state in your actual landing page title, okay? Uh, well, that makes sense because it's your site and that is what's going to help your page rank. Um, and number seven would be the quality of citations, which is off-site, okay? Um, as as a ranking factor now. Yelp. I know you. You've already mentioned Yelp, and Yelp. Yes, you know it's. Um, you know, if Yelp ranks highly, it's it's a it's a massive site, and people over the years have linked to it, and you know they've created hundreds of thousands of millions of pages, and it's built up as a massive directory. Uh, but to be all honest, um, you know, I've yet to come across a local business that is anything in Yelp that actually gets traffic from them. Um, and, and that's the bizarre thing. Um, so I'm not in. I'm not entirely sure exactly what you're you're asking, but traffic is going to be coming to your page. That's where you want it to be coming to. Um, and the quality of a citation, you can measure based upon whether people actually visit that page and follow to your site based on that. So. For example, a Yelp listing to me would be crap because you may get two visits in a year coming from that. Now, if you had a, um, let's say, a local, um, another local blog or business or something in the area um, that is, you know, well read and visited by, by people or whatever the case may be, and um, they happen to, you know, come across your product, and they talk about your product, or whatever you you, you are, and says, you know, this guy uh, does a fantastic job with uh, bathrooms. Uh, look at my bathroom, I love it. Look at these pictures. Here's his name, address, and there's his website. Now that would be a far better quality citation uh, than a Yelp because. They might have a couple of hundred thousand visitors um, in a year, and out of that one blog post, you might get 30 or 40 people coming to visit you. And out of those 30 or 40, because of the trust that they have for the site that they came from, um, out of the 30 or 40, you might actually get 10 orders. So that is a far better quality citation than a Yelp or a standard regular uh, crappy directory. Um, so I, I interpreting. I hope I've interpreted your question correctly, though. I think you did. I think you did. Uh, do you have a comment on this one, Tony? Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding it. I think it's basically is the benefit of uh, getting a citation for improving your ranking or getting the traffic, and I guess it depends. Some 
Some citations uh, have, are good for causing traffic. Uh, I hate to say it, but quite often Yellow Pages is a, is a good one for my clients, de depending on the type. Uh, in other cases, they don't actually generate traffic, but they're adding to your backlink profile. Uh, if they're using name, address, phone number, they're helping your uh, Google uh, local page uh, get more uh, trusted. Uh, so I, I guess it depends, and different citation sources have different values. Yep. Um, okay. All right. Well, look, um, he, here are the answers that were given uh, on the SEO questions community. Uh, we're a bit in a remiss. Uh, nobody nobody uh, uh, jumped in uh, to, to answer Dieter's question. Um, yeah, I liked, um, I especially, I mean, your, your answer was good, Tony. I, I especially like Tim's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, our next uh, question um, is number three, oddly enough, because that one was number two. Um, and it's, an, it's a question on uh, Penguin 3 from Aaron Bowman. Uh, he wants to know, anyone, is anybody noticing major changes because of Penguin 3? Um, have you heard of which sites are being hit uh, in particular? Well, um, I haven't been hit, uh, but I did have a recovery. Um, it wasn't from a manual, it was from algorithmic. Uh, we cleaned it up, gosh, early end of the beginning of this year. Uh, that's because it took so long for the refresh. Um, um, but it, in theory, is going to be running out far more regularly. I don't know how regularly. Um, let's, it, it could even be you know, every quarter, so every three or four months, so it could just be twice a year. I don't know, um, but yeah, I mean, I've 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 had a recovery. I haven't had any any of my clients go down this time, um, so this is, and and reading from some other reports, um, there are a lot of things, but it's particularly obviously your spam spammy links, um, really over optimized links. Just your you know. It, every kind of link against Google guidelines. Uh, there is a bit of theory that a lot of this is also, um, there seemed to be a little bit of a panda mixed into it, but, um, you know, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, I haven't seen any 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 effects. Um, but basically, for me, the ones I've seen, this is, this is basically, you know, on, on bad links, basically. Um, we haven't had any, you know, massively over um, any reports on, you know, really big name sites being hit or anything like that. Um, but stay tuned, you know, it's it's uh, it's early days, and this was a very very small uh, in terms of the scale of it. This was a very a very small sort of refresh. It wasn't like a full on mega penguin release because. Um, you know, people. It, it, well, it it happened over a day or two, uh, and and then pretty much leveled out. Um, so this was kind of a refresh. If you've been hit, um, as I think later on, some people mentioned that some of them were hit or something. Um, you need to look at your your links, um, see where they're coming from. Are they are they can they be termed or are they actually natural? Um, uh, if they're really bad, create a disavow because for all intents and purposes, Google does say this is going to be refreshing more often. We won't have to wait like another uh, another year before the next one. It could be in, you know, probably as early as maybe February, fe you know, February, March, something like that. Um, so sort out your disavows, try and remove as much stuff. Um, I would also have a look at some of your pages. Um, look for some, you know, possible panda issues also, um, but certainly Penguin was about, you know, links and bad neighbourhoods. Uh, some of the latest things I've been hearing uh, is that uh, 
it's going to last a couple of weeks. It's a slow rollout, or or it might be iterating through. Yeah, I uh, know. If you look at Algaroo, it was just boom one day and then nothing. And Dan was pretty uh, disappointed. Uh, in fact, uh, another thing I heard was this might just be a data refresh. It's still the same penguin. Mm. And yeah. that, uh, that they've rolled it out and they're still trying to work on the new version, which uh, there was something about avoiding Christmas so it could be in the new year. Yeah, they needed to, you know. I mean, like in the case of uh, this, this client I took on, um, they were hit in the last one in October, geez, we're 24, so October 2013. Then, of course, they dialed that penguin up so much that innocent sites, along with other sites and borderline sites, were just massacred. Um, uh, and, of course, then we had the massive rise of negative SEO companies, um, and, and, you know, just this massive rise. And so Google had to kind of figure out, well, we kind of let the cat out the bag here and we've created our own little um, unintended consequence here. Um, uh, so how are we going to do this? But the point is they couldn't have let it go on till, till next year. I mean, that would have been an entire year where some businesses are just languishing in la-la land. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I reckon this was just a little bit of a refresh, a get out of jail free card. Um, before Christmas. Yeah, just before Christmas, get out of jail free card, and then come March, April, they gonna they gonna totally release a new flipping beast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I was, with with the data I found, I found uh, spotted a couple of very obvious hits uh, from. Uh, I analyze uh, Australian website type companies, and both of them were half their backlinks were things like web design by, and all variants of that. So it was, it was blatantly uh, keyword link, link building. Yeah, and, the and it's it's also specific on those pages. It, your 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 entire site doesn't go down on this. Um, cause now that you mentioned it, I looked at, uh, someone else's site the other day, local in my area, graphic design, there is no keyword rich, uh, anchor text and they've, they've come right back up. They're sitting in like position two, uh, web design in, yeah, because of course, uh, web designers, uh, love to put web design by in their the footers of all their client sites. So this guy's got, I don't know, 6,000 links just anchor texted as web design coming off client sites. Now, you know, we can actually argue about this all day long, you know, with Google about is that an editorial link? Well, frankly, I think it is, especially, you know, if it was built into the guy's contract, that's fine. But, um, you know, we can debate it. But anchor texted and only the web design page has actually been slapped. So this also seems to be very, very targeted at the particular page or pages that you have over-optimized and built, you know, whether it was intentional or unintentional links. Because it, it does seem, because uh, I've been hit by Penguin, and it, it, to me it wasn't a kind of suddenly not there anymore. It was just uh, you lose a few uh, positions for this keyword, you lose a few for that. So mine was site wide. Uh, some mm. some terms I lost more ranking, but there's so much so much maths involved. You, you don't know, but it, it's not a uh, you're on page 20 now. It's things like yeah. you were third and now you're eighth, and that's enough. That's enough to hit you. So. Mm. Uh, the, the other interesting one was uh, a recovery I saw, and uh, Jim didn't like it because uh, it it ended up it was a park domain. So this this website guys that they'd been spamming keyword backlinks for a couple of years, uh, and they got hit on the previous uh, 2.1 or 2.0, and uh, around uh, September they actually just gave up, let the domain expire, 
and then this penguin comes out and they recover. So it's a park domain that they've uh, they've shut down, uh, which it's strange. Like it's still got all those spammy keywords. So why is it ranking for that keyword? They, they got penalised for it. So so why is it suddenly uh, uh, their ranking? Maybe they've softened it. Maybe some were disavowed. And the other thing is uh, the the algorithm didn't realize it was a park domain, which kind of points towards the data they got was around September, which I heard from somewhere that was around the date. Uh, SMX, I think, they were saying the data was taken about September. So if you did stuff after September, this event, this penguin probably didn't help you. You're going to wait for the next one. Yeah, um, I mean, as you know, the, the list of things I don't know would fill an encyclopedia. But um, I wonder if you guys have any thoughts on whether Penguin Three was just a winding back to Penguin Two. Definitely new data. Okay, all right. Uh, to because new, if new websites get penalised, they've got to be basing it on a new data set. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, th I think it's still the same maths. It's still the same algorithm. They've just uh, done a data refresh. And uh, um, he um, he asks for um, uh, sort of what kind of sites were hit. Well, I've just pulled up a couple here. Um, so we've got uh, a Black Hat affiliate site here, which is. Um, kberries.it um, and that was basically for um, pretty much yeah I mean they 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 they, they got hit um, and they were for it basically their stuff was sort of auto generated spun content um, over optimized links uh, things like that um, I just want to see if there's any other so we can. Uh, it does seem like the black hat world are the ones that are crying at the moment. The ones that are saying this happened, that happened. I've, I've not heard too many people saying, "Why me?" Uh, no, uh, I mean there's a lot. There's a lot uh, of stuff in black hat world saying, "Why I survived." <laughs> oh, as well. <laughs> there's a lot of them, and they're all offering their advice on. On, on, on their dodgy links and what kind of percentages they used, so many natural, so many dodgy, blah blah blah, uh, and they also and they they brag in that they survived it. You know whether you can take that with a bit of pinch of salt or not, not entirely sure. Um, but ordinarily, which is a bit weird, sometimes um, you know Google keeps an eye on 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 what's going on, and I think it was after the first penguin. Uh, a lot of black hats were were laughing, um, and then we had another penguin uh, in the, in the November after you know in 2002, and it was it was ruthless. So it was almost like they tiled, <laughs> dialed a notch up to a thousand percent. You know what I mean? Let's let's make them stop laughing, kind of thing. Yeah, you're not <laughs> laughing now. <laughs> um, yeah, an interesting thing which has been reported. Um, not entirely sure. It could have been a glitch, and I haven't had any confirmation coming back out of this to say it has changed. But apparently, sites that got nailed, um, all of a sudden, in their webmaster tools, their links to their sites in webmaster tools just said no data available. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so that is so quite an interesting little thing. So and that's the equivalent of, of um, becoming homeless at short notice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, big time. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you've been you you you've been naughty, and now we're taking away, <laughs> which is a bit, you know, it's, I think I, I think that might have just been some kind of hiccup. I'm sure Google will return uh, that you know links to the site uh, because. You know, in in all in in all fairness, you can't penalise someone and then remove 
uh, and say because you've violated our you know our, our guidelines and our terms of service um, but you can't then say well I'm not going to provide you any information on how you can you know comply with our guidelines again so I don't see how they could remove that forever it, 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 it I think I think there's some, some glitch somewhere because there shouldn't be that shouldn't have, that data shouldn't have changed because of the penguin uh, the back loop still there. Uh, even even disavow doesn't affect that actual data so maybe uh, I'll tell you, an interesting one um, you know, people say, well, you know, I've disavowed so many and my webmaster doesn't show my webmaster tools. Well, in in my experience, on I've probably got half a dozen disavows on, on different sites sitting out there. And in my experience, it doesn't happen overnight, but I have noticed that after sort of, let's say, a four or five month period, the links in your webmaster tools do drop down. It, it may not be exactly the amount that you've disavowed etc cetera, etc cetera, but they do actually decrease um, <laughs> which is bizarre and bizarrely enough and this I, I can't trace at the minute but in this one that has, has actually recovered they had pre-recovery 464 links in the site you know we had cleaned it up over the past year they had 464 links in in the webmaster tools. This week, obviously when Penguin rolled out, I was in webmaster tools looking, yeah, yeah, we're looking good, we're looking good, signs of recovery, impressions increasing, etc, etc. Went into links on site and that another added, another thousand have mysteriously arrived. <laughs> so I think there is a bit of a glitch in webmaster tools and links and how they are processing all that data I'm not entirely sure all AH refs and all of these others all confirm that we are there and roughly there about 460 to 480 links webmaster tools has found another mysterious thousand so I think there's a little bit of a hiccup somewhere along the line I, I don't know I've, I've always found webmaster tools has most data it, it out does them, but it, but they do a limit on how much they will show you. And uh, the last time I checked, that kind of rotated every week or so. So yeah. if I, the next version of my tool that pulls out that data is going to do a rolling update, so it will hopefully get more details than Webmaster Tools tells you. Then uh, what else was thing? Oh yeah, um, the coding side of me thinks this link between webmaster tools breaking is that maybe the new penguin added changed the data structure a little or a, a variable got set to null and some little coding problem that when they suck the links from the main thing the uh, a bit of a coding error happened and the the data basically an exception happened and data was lost that'd be interesting be good to see how the code's done on that. And also, after this penguin, um, in this links link research tools study, they also found a significant amount of sites which weren't dinged by penguin, but had suffered from a panda problem, which are all recovering over after this refresh. So in the states, there's about.com, WashingtonPost.com, RollingStones.com, eBay in Australia, only Melbourne.com.au. Those were all suffering from panda issues, um, and after this penguin refresh, they are all recovering. So, yeah, it, it, it I think it was there, there, there's a bit of a refresh going on everywhere, and to fully understand it, we're just going to have to wait a while um, just to see what comes out. More and more people reporting on what happened, how it happened, and that's where you can just build up a bigger picture on potentials. Yeah, on your thing about links going disappearing, 
Uh, I, I had a, a negative SEO attack four, know, three, four months ago. Uh, and what I noticed was because it was low quality crap that they were pointing at my domain, was the speed that those links broke, that the websites went down, or the links disappeared, was rapid. I'm talking like uh, uh, they might have put a thousand links to my website in one month. The next month there's only 500. They're, they're just falling apart, these links, because they're so cheap and nasty, uh, which is a kind of good thing for, for people being attacked. Is There's a, nat a very fast natural uh, degradation of those links, so they'll stop affecting you quite quickly. Because, uh, yeah. It's amazing how many of those domains were actually non-functional by the time I went to look at it and disavow them. Do you remember that one that um, I posted on SEO Questions um, w where we showed that um, a nest of sites that were in South Africa? Um, or no, was it Zaire? Uh, something like that. Um, you've probably been there on Special Ops, Tim. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I actually, mean, actually, no. I've never, never done Zaire, mate. Um, uh, no, cross-border raids into Mozambique, Angola, Botswana, Southwest Africa, Zimbabwe, but never into Zaire. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I mean, that, those guys, their links wouldn't break down because they were all their sites. Uh, they put together a net nest of sites and. I think um, I, I showed the, the, the uh, Google spreadsheet, uh, didn't I, at the time? It was, a, it was about 20 million links that they, they, they dropped on me in, uh, in one, one day. Do you recall that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the point being? Oh, well, no, the, the, the point being that it, it, their, their links didn't disappear. Tony was saying that they were low quality links and, and uh, the links uh, rapidly disappeared. Well, in this case, they didn't disappear. In fact, about six months later, the, the actual sites were, were still up. But for some reason or well, other, they, they, they disappeared from my webmaster tool. Yeah. I mean, um, you get some bizarre ones because I was looking at a site. I did an audit um, for a potential uh, client two days ago, which I uh, I don't know whether I'm... Uh, anyway, um, but there were a lot of links appearing in the Webmaster Tools for really dodgy bad bookmarking, like from Links Arena. You know, I mean, that's like the lowest of the lowest of the lowest quality bookmarked link you can get. Um, and they had literally thousands of them being reported via webmaster tools um, and looking at the date of the pages that they were cre being created in links arena I mean these are a good few years old so uh, I think sometimes yeah I mean who, who knows with Google um, but sometimes something that's been there and added manually or something like that uh, perhaps they say, well, guys, you know, that was added manually. We know that was added manually. You either had to use a specific tool, but you had to create an account to actually submit that. Therefore, we're keeping that, and we're showing that to you um, for you to address because you know you did wrong there. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. I want to tell you go on, Tony, sorry. Uh, I was just wondering if, like, uh, there are domains that sometimes do so bad that Google removes for the search index. I wonder if those ones that are that bad get removed from the back your backlink profile as well. That are uh, like most domains will just get devalued. This kind of system, but there's a few that get really like you're gone. What about Billy Muggins like me, who's never bought a link, never swapped a link, never done anything to do with links? Um, but I, I, you know, I get hit with 20 million links, um, and, and everybody can see them. 
Um, what about that? Well, you see, that's the whole thing, Jim. You know, um, it's like I said before. You know, this whole thing about oh, Google going negative SEO now. Nah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, you can't get hit because we notice it and we just devalue and we just totally ignore them. Well, yours is the ex prime example that that doesn't happen. That's right. Um, in fact, if there's any Googlers listening to this now or in, in, in later time, I've got to tell you, that story about you noticing it and handling it, uh, I reckon you're a pack of friggin' liars. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, questions on the uh, SEO questions, or at least um, answers given on, on the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, there was one that I, I just wanted to point out, I just wanted to clarify with you guys. John Akuti uh, Saramya um, said, Penguin 3 targets both on-page and off-page spamming. Um, uh, should, should I comment on that and say that's not correct? Uh, well, we don't know, do we? Not for certain, but it's definitely backlinks is the most correlated cause. So surely, surely on-page on spamming would just be a panda issue, wouldn't it? Well, when Penguin first came out, uh, I, th I, I think Google's terminology was uh, a bit broad, and people were thinking uh, stuff like uh, putting uh, lots of links in the footer, that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, in fact, I just posted someone's analysis of my website and he was, uh, he's on the theory that outgoing links are very important in Penguin. That uh, if, if you link to bad neighborhoods, that kind of Penguin might get you that way as well. So we still don't know for certain. <coughs> but what we do know is when we look at these websites that are hit, in a lot of cases, they've got lots of uh, money money phrase backlinks coming into them. Uh, but uh, it, it could cover other stuff that people are kind of forgetting about because that's the most talked about aspect of it. Mm. Okay. Uh, and uh, but by the way, uh, Tony and Tim, um, on your uh, panelist report tonight, you uh, if you click the uh, um, answers on uh, the SEO questions community from your your panelists report, you'll see that you have the ability to mark any, any number of questions as best answer. If you could do that for me. Oh. Um, there's, there's some quite uh, good and useful answers, I thought, on this particular question. But let's move on from uh, Aaron Bowman's question. Um, our next uh, is from um, Amy Jasmine. Well, that'll wake up Tim. Um, <laughs> Amy Jasmine asks a question on schema markup. Uh, she says, does the structured markup really help in SEO or is it really a ranking factor? Because I have heard somewhere that almost all the websites that are ranked at the top uh, of the search in the result pages in regarding this. Okay, I think uh, you need to take the two things into context here. Uh, when you say in terms of a ranking factor, um, to disprove that, I mean, there's a lot of sites out there which are number one, two, three, which have no schema markup at all. Um, the ones which I know uh, really well is because I did a bit of a research paper for uh, Blue Claw. Uh, to do with fashion industry and um, Google Plus and of course schema markup. Uh, the top 10 biggest players in the fashion industry in the UK uh, do not, oh sorry, one used uh, schema markup. So in that sense, no. However, schema markup is fantastic for one uh, appearing uh, you know, or ha having added search 
snippets appearing. Uh, you have the knowledge uh, knowledge panel. You have the knowledge graph. You have um, all sorts of additional things which Google is really ramping up at the minute in terms of semantic. And of course, if you don't mark things up, Google uh, either has to take a guess at it or just clearly sort of you know uh, doesn't use it. The point being here is as a ranking factor in terms of what you know basic knowledge like ranking factor as in oh I'm in position five and I add local business markup or um, I add um, uh, you know uh, any other type you know uh, review markup or location or locale or, or you know all this literally thousands of different types of markup but if I'm on number five without schema and I add schema markup I'm going to go to number one or number two no that's not going to happen um, but in terms of you know the the, the 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 broader sense where you're going to be found for a lot more different things you're going to f uh, see things appearing uh, in the knowledge panel info panel in terms of traffic in terms of how um, semantically Google reads your site uh, I say it's a no-brainer and if you have a page where you can add schema markup whether it be a recipe a review a book a movie a hotel a local business a service uh, times opening times you know if you have something on a page that can be marked up I would highly recommend you using it uh, because you know, it will it will be uh, semantically used somewhere. If not now, in the future, it definitely will be. Um, so, if you do have content that can be marked up, I would mark it up. But in terms of from number five to number one, in terms of basic ranking by just adding schema onto your page, that's not going to happen. Yeah, fair enough. I think this comes from there was some some study that said. A small percentage of websites have markup on their their, their pages, but a, a larger proportion actually rank well at the top. And uh, it's, it's another one of these like, is this a correlation? If they've done schema markup, it probably means they're doing a lot of other things as well. They're they're hiring SEOs. They're doing all the best to make their website good. It, it doesn't mean the schema itself has actually altered the ranking. And I tell you, time. yeah, I tell you another interesting thing is think think freebase. You know, don't stop at schema. Think freebase also. What I found on TripAdvisor property pages the other day. Now, when you scroll like right down to the bottom of it, which nobody ever does, but at the very bottom they added a little block in there called additional information. And they are creating information based upon freebase information. So it's this property is otherwise known as XYZ Hotel, Hotel XYZ in XYZ in Hotel. Um, so not only are TripAdvisor marking up property pages in terms of schema, but they are also providing the infrastructure now to start potentially marking up for freebase. Or, or they're pulling data from free, Freebase, or uh, no? Because it's not actually marked, having... and it's not coming from anywhere. They they are putting into place actions now for Freebase. They are marking it up and with schema RF. They, they are marking it up as you know, uh, uh, you know, locale and things like this. But they are presenting it in a way that is Freebase structured. So I bet you, as soon as um, Freebase expands a bit more. They'll mark. They will remove that that um, schema markup and replace it with Freebase markup. So because Freebase they, and markup does it? Yeah, um, it's like Freebase is not really. It doesn't have a markup, but just the way that Freebase queries are structured. Uh, so it would be locale forward slash. You know, so it's pretty much the same as schema, but it's just it's slightly different in the way they structure all their nodes. So, you know, the, so the the point here is, Amy, if you do have 
something on your site that you can potentially mark up, I would really uh, you know start using this and start getting used to it I mean I still have issues with you know um, like I do a lot of work with hotels and you know Google says oh we don't recognize hotels just yet and schema tells me oh no we do and then you know all of a sudden I've got okay well how do I mark up a room now because neither of them have the structured markup for it yet but I would like to mark that up and the point is so you add it in at the minute, Google says in rich snippets, oh, we don't recognize that, but you add it in because ultimately in six months' time, someone will get around to the scheme of adding another, you know, adding something to it, and it might just be slightly changed as in not room, they might call it accommodation or something like this, and then we can just go and change the schema. But to start, yeah, if you do have a site which lends itself to this kind of structured data, go for it. You know, it, it can't help you, it can only benefit you. Mm. Google tries its best to try and understand this stuff and and understand the web in a semantic way and a, a web of things rather than strings and that sort of stuff. Uh, but marking up is a way to give it a helping hand. It's to to make it a bit more certain about the decisions it's making. Uh, and with that, what that means, it understands what you're talking about better. And if it understands that better, you will rank in the right things and not the wrong things. So it might not technically increase your ranking in something, but if, if, there's a, if Google can work out that a page you're talking about is certainly about a subject and not about another one, you might rank higher in the one it knows you're certain about and lower in the one you're not. So it's kind of a balance out thing. That, that you're not going to be uh, technically higher ranked. They're just going to get that balance better. And uh, so the more information, the clearer you can make it to Google. Uh, so markup stuff, and uh, you've you've got the other concepts of uh, co-citation and co-occurrence. That all that comes there, and Google's trying to just take this mess, pull it together, and understand. And yeah, best way to help is schema or uh, RDFA or whatever language of your choice you want to uh, do that semantic markup. Cool, Tony. Um, okay, so uh, we had a, a, a very large number of um, great answers on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus. Um, uh, if you're watching this at home, I'd suggest you, you, know, you go there. You'll see them there. Um, they're running up the screen at the moment. Um, have we really um, covered this, Tony, do you think? We can move yeah. on to the next? Yeah. Okay. Moving right along to uh, um, question six from John Pitcher. Um, it's on Google Plus Pages. Um, he said, uh, to appear as an AG pin on the Google Maps that accompany many local searches, you need a Google Plus local page. Um, should local businesses have a Google Plus local page and a Google business slash brand page? Should the customer's website link to both pages with role publisher? And if so, I assume that businesses should use their... Uh, um, Google Plus uh, business brand page to interact on Google Plus and just have their Google Plus local page for the Google Maps and customer testimonials. Yeah, I'm not so sure about all that. What, what, what's your practice with your clients, man? Uh, well, for me, it, it varies. Uh, if you uh, <coughs> If the business is just a single uh, location, uh, it's you, it's best to just keep it onto the one page and do it as a local page. Uh, if your business has a few locations, then you have to start thinking, we're going to have three, four, five local pages. Do we want to have a uh, also another page that's going to be kind of the general brand page? And then the extreme case, uh, I know something like Starbucks is uh, 
they're going to have all those local pages and definitely have a bus central business page as well. Uh, it, what happens then is it gets a bit more, a bit harder to maintain. Uh, well, the single page easiest to maintain. You, you post on the same place. You, you, it ranks in the maps. It ranks in local, it, and it's the one that people see in Google Plus. But when you start mixing them up, you got to think uh, like if you post in one, if you post in a local page, people on Google Plus probably won't see that post. Uh, and only people in that location will. So you, you, you got to start playing with how you manage that in a social media sense. Uh, for me, what I tend to do is I, I have the pages reshare each other. Uh, but uh, basically, the answer is single page if you can, single local page. Otherwise, have a uh, branded business page plus multiple location pages. Fair enough. Look, um, one, 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 oh, Tim's back. Hey, man. Um, we're, 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 we're talking about this question. I'll actually um, put it back on the screen for you uh, um, if I can. Yes, I can. It's just magic. Um, and um, it, it, it's, it's about um, a question from John Pitcher. Just wondering whether um, he should be running um, for his clients a Google Plus local page plus uh, a Google Plus uh, business or brand page. Um, Tony thinks not, and I agree with him. Um, what's your take on it? For me, pers okay. If you have one address, then I would use the Google Plus local page, and that's it. And use mark it up as your real publisher, and use that to your, you know, to to to, to do your posts, etc. If you have a uh, a site where you've got, let's say, call it for argument's sake, um, a restaurant chain, and there's, you know, it doesn't have to be massive. Just think, there's two addresses or three three properties in it. In that instance, I would have a brand page, mark that as Rail Publisher, uh, and on all of the internal pages where you actually have the particular restaurant with the address and that location of that office, that would uh, <clears throat> just have a, a link to the local page. So if it's one actual bricks and mortar address, use your Google Plus local. If you have more addresses or more offices, you know, a couple of offices, locations, Within within the site as 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 a business as a whole, then I would have a brand page, um, and then uh, your, your your local pages for those different offices, assuming that they are in different areas. I mean, if you just had, you know, if they were all you know two doors down or something, that's not really going to make a make a huge difference in terms of local search. But if they were in different sort of uh, regions where it would appear in different um, locations within a, a, a local search, then definitely Google Plus local pages for those. Now in terms of communicating on them, obviously your brand, you can um, you know, have your all your stuff posted onto brand and then anything that's going on locally um, would go onto those individual local pages specific to what that news was. Um, and treat them as sort of like separate just for those area news and then your brand could actually repost or post all news. Um, and that's the way I would treat it and that's the way I have done. So. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Just to add to um, um, both of you guys, uh, totally agree with everything that you've all both said. Um, but I just want to add uh, just a, a little helpful tip uh, that we found uh, very useful. Um, this is this is on sites with shopping carts. Um, so there are a lot of email templates on a shopping cart site that uh, interact with the customer for various things, various reasons, like when they join a loyalty club or, or when that they log in to buy something or when they register on the site uh, to, to store their details. 
Um, we um, have we insert uh, a line um, at at the bottom of those uh, email templates, and it sim it simply says, um, if you like what we do, please help others to find us um, by uh, leaving a review on this page, and we give them a link uh, to the Google Plus local page, um, and also. Uh, um, all of the front of house people that, that uh, have interactions with the clients, that, that's part of their email SIG line. Um, and it works. Um, it doesn't generate a lot, uh, but it does generate good, solid reviews. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of, you know, every time the, the client is being interacted with, they're, they're given that option. Some notice it, some don't. Uh, Probably lots notice it and don't take action, but at least some of them um, do take action. And I can see from the uh, answers from uh, uh, the um, SEO questions community on Google Plus that uh, Masataki Wasa uh, agrees with you guys, um, and, and uh, also, also uh, our good friend uh, uh, Ratimi uh, Aramaloi, uh, he also uh, agrees. So, Tim, uh, I, 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 I guess we can move on to the next. Okay. This one is um, from Cassandra Tyler, who wants to know, is it okay to shorten your website name in the URL? She says, hey, uh, she's certainly come to the right place, Tim, uh, because she says, uh, I have an SEO question for the experts. Um, she said, is it okay to shorten your website name uh, in the URL? For example, uh, rcstories.com versus reallycoolstories.com. Uh, does it affect SEO? Well, the, re the reason I've paused there is kind of two two things. If you if your site's already running on reallycoolstories.com, um, I suppose it wouldn't be too difficult to change it to that. In terms of an SEO benefit, um, there probably wouldn't be any change if you change it from really cool stories to RCS stories. Dot com, um, and in fact, it might slightly benefit in in this penguin age because <coughs> uh, coming out of a little bit of a penguin research, it seems to be that actually uh, branded anchor text uh, may not be great. So someone saying um, really cool stories .com may actually, if there were thousands of them, uh, may actually potentially at some point reach critical mass in terms of people linking just to check out RCS stories .com. Um, but that's sort of here, here nor there. So just forget that. But that's a future potential. Um, but no, there shouldn't be. A problem. There isn't going to be some immediate actual benefit if you changed it from from reallycoolstories.com to RCS. Um, in terms of a in terms of um, a potential issue there, just make sure that if you do go from the, your longer one to your shorter one, um, you make sure that you actually plan it properly uh, and get all your rewrites in and your redirects in. Uh, plan it out before you do it because if your site is doing really well and you don't do the change and the redirects and the rewrites properly, you could actually see a, uh, a drop in traffic and rankings. So um, that would only be my only concern in that sense is, is how you made that change. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a difficult one to give a good answer on because. Um, really cool stories. I, I think um, that's a great uh, domain name. I mean, people would, yeah, would remember. It, yeah, it all depends on the domain name, you know. I mean, I think she's just given us an example there, potentially. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it, 
if it was something rather naff like pink fluffy jelly beans versus PF beans, you know, PF beans is probably better than pinkfluffyjellybeans.com. So I think it all depends on what that, that name is. Um, and is that is that name actually brandable, if you know what I mean? Would it look good in a brand and in a logo? And it, would it be brandable, whereas the shorter URL might actually be more brandable? It, it's, it's easier. It's, it's more brandable in that sense. I, I think you need to weigh up your pros and cons. But in terms of uh, some kind of ranking benefit, there isn't. Um, as long as you obviously you migrate properly. Um, and from a brandable point of view, what, what's best? For, uh, what's best and easier to brand? Yeah, I see um, in the um, um, SEO questions community answers, um, which um, are on the screen at the moment, um, as well as a great answer from uh, Rotimi or uh, um Cassandra herself um, um, asked um, whether. Does it, does it matter whether a site is .com, .org, or, or .net? Um, I think you'll agree with me, Tim, that um, it's always better um, to have the .com. Yeah. Um, it, it used to be years ago that um, the browsers uh, would auto-complete um, the .com on the end um, yeah. uh, by, mean, by default. Do they still do that these days? I don't know. Not that I've seen, but if you, it all it all depends. If you were starting a brand new site today and you had a choice between a .com and a .net, I would pick a .com. However, a .net can be brandable and it can be built up over time. I've got a .net site because the .com, the idiot who had it, never used it, parked a main, never wanted wanted to sell it for stupid money, so it was like sod you. Um, um, but this site's been running for over ten years and. In fact, you know the autocomplete. Actually, if you search for the for the name, actually autocompletes it to .net now. So you know, over, given over time, it's not a problem, and .net will do just as well as .com. But if you had the choice for a new site, I would take .com over .net. But if you're looking at the long-term game and you had to just pick a .net, it's not the be-all and end-all. It takes a you know. So it's interesting you say that. Um, we, my email address is uh, osbiz, o z b i z dot net dot au, and and how that came about was uh, an employee of uh, our company um, uh, leaked the, the the new name of our uh, company to uh, um, this um, low level uh, um, peanuts uh, in Brisbane. And um, so anyway, we, we'd um, uh, formed the company, uh, Osbiz, uh, Osbiz Holdings Proprietary Limited, registered the company. And uh, when we went to uh, register our domain name, um, it was gone. Um, and um, next thing it popped up, um, um, the guy wanted to sell us uh, our domain name. Now, in those days, it, he wasn't asking all that much, I think, about four or five hundred dollars but I, I just jacked up and um, we made it osbiz.net.au instead and we sacked the guy uh, who'd um, betrayed us. Anyway, um, I think this pretty well covers it for Cassandra, doesn't it? Let's say yes. Um, now next um, is um, a question from a student, Dania, um, factors in, in influencing website SEO. Um, we can see from there that it attracted no answers on, on the SEO questions community. Um, but student Dania asks, uh, um, do, or do, do 404 errors um, and low quality forum content affect website SEO? Well, I, I, let me jump in and say, uh, I, I, you go ahead, Tim. I, I didn't realise you were coming in. Oh, <laughs> no, uh, for me, um, 404 errors will not have an effect. 
Um, uh, you know, uh, Google has said that you could have a million 404 uh, errors, um, and, it, and it's it's not a problem because a 404 is the right way to treat a page that no longer exists on site as such. Um, low quality forum content. Um, I'm assuming you're saying someone asks a question like, um, hi guys, I wanted to know what kind of coffee to buy. Now, uh, there's either no answers to it or maybe one person answers on the page and goes, Nescafe. Um, and if you had thousands of these, yes, that would be... Um, a potential panda issue there, um, and it could see. And, and we're not talking a penalty here, but panda is more of a filter for thin or low quality content, um, and you may see a mass reduction in those pages. Um, so, to answer your question, four or four, no low quality forum content, yes, that will affect. Yep. Okay, well I, I think we can safely move on from this one. Uh, um, student Denier, I, I hope you're happy with that. Next um, is a question, oh, from me, uh, why is it from me? Oh yes, <coughs> sorry about this. Um, I, I stumbled across this question and uh, um, it looked like we'd accidentally um, deleted uh, from our uh, community. And so I copied it back. It's a huge question. I, I won't attempt um, <coughs> to read it out. Um, it was a question, I think, from... Um, oh, let me think. I'll, I'll, look at, I'll see if I can find the name for it, Tim. Um, but um, in the meantime, um, can you uh, offer uh, an answer? Uh, apparently, uh, this lady had a, a wonderful conversation with uh, uh, our uh, esteemed uh, Micah fisher Kirsner, and he suggested that uh, she post here with a question. And uh, so um, I, I don't want to let this one go, otherwise uh, Micah might uh, think we don't like him and uh, not we, come we, back again. Did answer it last week, Jim? It was last week, was it? Yes, we answered okay. it last week. Okay, skipping that one, going to the next. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I know, because I remember Alistair gave her a really cracking answer. Okay. All right. Okay. This one is from um, Marco Ruiz uh, on the Penguin 3 update. Um, he said it's a real question. Um, does this ap update actually affect most searches? Um, like, if I run a soccer news site with AdSense, do I need to do anything? Um, and he quoted an article uh, um, in, in his question, that Google has confirmed that it has updated its Penguin filter on Friday. Penguin targets sites deemed to be spammy, especially those found in violation of Google's guidelines about linking. I see Tony McCreeth uh, gave a great answer uh, on the um, SEO questions community, um, but um, Tony's not with us at the moment. Um, he's uh, taking a call, I think. Um, but Tim, uh, do you have a response on this one? Uh, yeah, I mean... Penguin 3, um, yeah, you know, it, it basically targets low quality, um, you know, it does exactly what it says on the tin, uh, low quality links. Um, so basically, um, they would be, you know, directory links, bookmarking sites, article submissions, uh, press releases, um, you know, a paid guest post where they can prove it's a paid guest post, um, you know, uh, 
auto-generated links, XRunner, stuff like that, link networks, um, links coming out of private blog networks, um, common forum, uh, comment spam, forum, forum spam links, uh, all that kind of stuff that's in, obviously, your Google, uh, you know, the guidelines. Um, that is essentially what is being targeted. Excellent. Okay, uh, Marco, um, unfortunately, uh, Tony isn't um, here for him to speak on this, um, uh, unless he's just about to come back, I don't know. Uh, but uh, on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus, he oh, yeah. said, "Ah, oh, there he is. Hey, mate. Good. Uh, yeah, I was, I was listening in. Uh, so I think the key, well, the comment I said on that last one was, uh, it's basically targeting websites and not search results. So as long as you're web, you're behaving, uh, you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, and in fact." It should uh, get rid of. It, it might even help you because people who are not behaving will disappear. Okay, and then, then that's it. Is, is that all we need to say? That was about it. That was I think, kind of what the answer I said. Or are we on a different question now? <laughs> no, no, we're, we're on question ten uh, from Marco Ruiz, uh, titled uh, "Penguin Three Update." And the next one, question 11, is another one uh, from uh, Tessa Bernacki. Um, it's titled Hit Hard with Penguin. Um, Tessa says, uh, hi, I have a question. I recently took over a site that was previously run by someone else uh, in terms of SEO. We were ha hit hard by Penguin. Uh, no manual, uh, just an algorithmic penalty. Our search engine result pages results uh, dropped for the two main keywords significantly uh, from the top 20 into the 50s. I did some research and noticed that our anchor text exact match is about 50%, um, which is not good. However, the previous person had submitted a disavow file in July with some of the sites um, showing this anchor text. I'm not sure what else to check. Uh, everything else seems to be in order. Would July be early enough to make it for the Penguin update? If only we knew, Tessa. Um, if, if, if they were disavowed, um, would they show as follow links still? Um, any ideas are welcome. Thank you. Um, well, Tony, Tony did give you a quick answer there. Basically, obviously based on your July question, yes, um, July should have been enough. Um, uh, if you if if your disavow had been added in July, then for this update last weekend, <laughs> there was plenty of time to be taken into consideration. Um, if you have not recovered, then you have not done enough. Um, so pure and simply, you let you have still not found, or you are still trying to get away with. Um, trying to allow some really crappy links. Um, you've got to be brutally honest there with yourself uh, and with the site and forget about trying to save any any links. If it is not natural, and you've got to be honest Tessa, if it's not natural, disavow it. Also, you do need to make some form of significant kind of um, effort in actually removing these links itself. So your disavow file, so let's just say for an example, um, you know, from uh, let's say for example you had 10 links, uh, really dodgy ones. Out of those 10, you, you contacted all 10, um, but only managed to get some satisfaction and have two removed those other eight would need to be added to the disavow file. But you have made an effort to have these, these, these removed. Um, there, there, are, there are some things that if you know, Google hasn't seen you make any specific effort in having these removed, then no matter what you do with, in terms of a disavow, and this is especially true with a manual penalty, 
if you if they if you aren't seen to have made an effort in cleaning up your site, then there is no just get out of jail free with a disavow file. So, what I would try and what I firstly what I would do now, because this should rerun in the new year, um, because it, it you know it's it's Google does say it's going to be a regular continuous thing now. Um, so what I would do is relook at those links, download all of them. And be ruthless. Don't go, oh, that's on the edge. You know, yeah, we could get away with no. Disavow all the domains, forget about the individual links, all the all the domains for all those dodgy sites. Okay. And then submit that disavow file. And then at the same point, you've still got to do a little bit of work. You still need to who is them, contact them, and ask for removal of them. Um, because a combination of that and your disavow file, it's it's you know ultimately when it reruns, it will you know you will be released. But the point is, yeah, is if you did submit a disavow file and you haven't been released, you never removed enough, and you are on that kind of still on that sort of. Uh, yes, because I've done it before, back in 2012 with the first penguin. It was like, yeah, but that looks all right. Well, actually, no, it's not. You know, because we're looking at it going, yeah, you know, actually, I reckon I can get away with that. Well, you clearly haven't. Uh, you got to be tough. That is not natural. Boom, it's got to go, um, and just work your way through it. Cool, man. Uh, I think I'd add that. Uh uh, like you, you'll know the ones you've created, but don't just disavow them. Disavow anything that either doesn't look natural or or looks completely useless and complete waste of time because it's it's not going to be helping you. So disavow will make sure it doesn't hurt you. Okay. Um. All right. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Everything's going wrong right now. Okay, so let's let's move on from Tessa Benaki's um, question. Um, let's have a quick look at our um, questions on the committee. Just the one from Tony, and uh, of course uh, he would have um, built on that. Um, let's look to the next on our run list. Um, which is uh, question 12 from Sorab uh, Rowat uh, on RSS feeds and uh, sitemap. Um, he said, I don't understand why Google is saying um, to use RSS feeds and sitemap uh, both. Um, while we can update our sitemap and add new pages anytime. Not sure exactly what he means, but I do remember Google did actually say something about RSS feeds recently, didn't they? Yeah, I John, it was John Mueller, was it? So yeah, it's uh, basically he. I think he was mainly saying that you can use an RSS feed as well as a sitemap. Uh, they, they understand both types. Uh, and the the, S, the difference in essence is uh, a sitemap is a complete list of every single page on your on your website. An RSS feed is typically the last ten new pages you've added. So uh, we don't know exactly, but Google, uh, the crawler might consider the RSS feed a stronger signal to decide to recrawl stuff. And uh, the other thing John Mueller reminded people about is, is RSS feeds support a thing called pub sub hubbub. And what this is, is uh, if, if you can get your uh, website to support this, Google will actually uh, subscribe to your feed and you can, whenever uh, your feed adds a new uh, uh, post on it, Google will instantly be informed and could potentially instantly index that page. So uh, this is probably more realistic for large websites, uh, but it, it's a potential for getting real-time indexing, which is great. Uh, but for the average Joe, 
you probably don't need to worry about it. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, All right. Um, Tony, I see you were looking after Soreb uh, on the community, uh, and I thank you for that. Um, can, I, can I set myself as the best answer? Yes, by all means. Uh, go, you, you go right ahead. That, that's what they do on the um, uh, Google forums. Um, Okay, um, let's let's look at the next. Dan has um, located the issue with the, the, the questions being out of order, guys, uh, and uh, he's working on a fix. Um, Randy Milanovic asks, um, if you are going to offer me page rank improvement, uh, he, he, he said, um, um, oh, actually, I'm not sure if this is a question. Or um, he's telling us, or he, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, he was spammed by somebody, and he's telling us how he feels. Um, but um, anyway, he said, uh, if you're going to offer me page rank imp improvement, um, one, uh, you should keep up to date with SEO news. Page rank is no longer updated. Well, that's true that it, uh, the toolbar isn't, but I'm sure Google is updating their page rank. Um, to uh, have a better existing page rank score than mine. Um, three, oh, and don't bother submitting my contact form asking about SEO services when the purpose is to pitch me. I totally agree with that. That really pains me. The people that um, get into your business practice, into your business processes, and um, um, spam you from them. It's never going to work. Anyway, um, and uh, okay, oh, I was um, he was complaining about um, naming and shaming kayakonlinemarketing.com and www.completeseopromotion.com. But I'm not sure if I go ahead, Tony. What? Uh, we've switched to the news uh, community now. Oh, is this a news item? Mm. Um, uh, it's something we must do, Dan. All right. Um, did you guys have a comment on on this? Mm. Is there an article associated with it? Oh, there's a video. Oh no, no, that's sorry. Just getting done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure the meaning of it. Uh, well, yeah. I remember the history now, and, and it's just come to me. Uh, um, what, what it was, uh, Randy posted this uh, initially on the SEO questions community, and of course, since we only accept SEO questions, we had had him remove it. Um, but um, we, we did say to uh, Randy, he could post it uh, on our. Uh, um, on, on, on our um, um, SEO news community. Anyway, um, all right. Um, if you're still watching uh, at this stage, uh, oh, we don't have a viewer, but I'm sure. Oh, Mike Fisher Kirster, how are you, mate? Hey. Um, Tim, um, um, uh, hang on a minute. I'll get Dan to put a, 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 the URL in, in the um, comments for you to reload. What, what, what kept you today, Michael? We've missed you. Oh, just been a bit swamped. I can't stay on for too long today, but um, I wanted to still at least try to jump on for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sure, we're, we're glad to see you. It, it's uh, it's getting towards the holidays. Things things kind of ramp up over here. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Um. I'm a bit rattled at the moment. Just let me get my my bearings here. Okay. So um, let let's move on uh, to the next. Um, while that's later, let me say that. Um, 
Um, we've finished our questions um, for the night, uh, but now uh, we come to uh, our SEO, our weekly SEO news roundup. Um, and um, uh, each week through the week, uh, when we see uh, items of interest uh, popping up, uh, we'll post them uh, under the SEO news community. And um, each Thursday night, uh, we will go through and uh, um, discuss these topics. This one was um, an article which was shared by Dijon uh, SEO, and uh, I reposted it uh, um, to the SEO news community on the basis that uh, if Dan Petrovic likes it, uh, it must be all right. And uh, um, I, I think I remember Tim Capper actually has read this article and was very impressed with it. So I'll ask Tim uh, um, to uh, read on. Class, quality, cool and suave. I see. <laughs> um, I'm not reading the article. Are we talking about the uh, link research tool case study? Um, it was uh, Penguin 3 rollout analysis and how to understand it. Can you see it up on the screen there or not? Yeah, I can, but it's um, like bouncing between 10 screens. Yeah, it's for the um, link research tool. Here. That's what yeah. it No, I mean, that, that was pretty much the, you know, I mean, a lot of people have chucked some stuff out in the last week, and I think this was probably one of the um, more in-depth, better ones certainly out there um, yeah you know they looked at a whole a whole load of um, sort of different different aspects uh, one was it's just a little bit of a refresh nothing new um, you know because it seemed almost like a little bit of a damp damp squid in that in that sense um, they you know he looked he looked at um, Sites which have been dinged from Black Hat to, um, you know, really spammy ones. Some interesting things coming out of that. The ones which reportedly received um, an actual manual penalty. Their site, oh no, sorry, it, he didn't actually say manual um, in that sense. So I'm not sure whether he meant manual or algorithmic, but the sites that were affected by the Penguin 3 seem to, and, and we've already discussed it, a potential glitch um, hiding the links in their webmaster tools from them. Um, then there were other anomalies that some sites which were actually pander affected sites actually recovered after this Penguin refresh. Uh, and he, you know, looks at them um, and obviously tries to add, add some analysis and, and, you know, some idea behind it. But uh, but it's really good because he's he's gone through, he's provided screenshots. It's really clear to understand. Obviously, it it throws up some some anomalies, uh, but ultimately, the whole thing at the end of it. Um, is of course we're still looking at crappy, you know, uh, links. So directories, bookmarking sites, submissions, press releases, uh, auto-generated links, link networks, things like that. Um, but it was it's a really great read in terms of what happened, what kind of sites benefited, what did they do, which ones were affected, whether and and also the the anomalies with the pan the, the, the panda ones which recovered. Um, uh, it's just a very very good report overall uh, about what happened last weekend, um, and no doubt we're going to have a few more coming out in the next week or so. Uh, but this was just a really great overview of Penguin Three. Uh, who was affected, who wasn't affected, who recovered, who never recovered. And bear in mind, they actually do um, a number of these. Um, they have people who do it as well with the training. I've, I've gone through a few of their uh, articles as well, um, oftentimes detailing the focus around Penguin. Um, so usually they're, they're pretty thorough like this, which is always nice.
And then, of course, uh, if you look at the, the list, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me just jump ahead. It looks like, at least from what others are saying, um, this this penguin might have only really been a, a refresh versus a, a whole new uh, functional update. Yeah, that's pretty much what uh, Tony and Tim said earlier. Um, they're, they're calling it a refresh. Yeah, that's not surprising per se. It's like uh, I reckon it's a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gonna go for a little bit longer before they start to really consider that. They have to. I don't think they're at the point of of, uh, of returning around. Mm. Personally, I, I think it's the, the height of hubris to um, imagine that they can um, al algorithmically uh, pick what is a, a spam link or um, a um, um, well a bad link, if you like. Um, I, I, I just don't understand how anyone could imagine that they could uh, decide um, whether a link, a bad link, what they did deem to be a bad link was placed by the owner of the site or po posted by a, a competitor um, to damage the site. I think the whole plan is just fatally flawed. Um, it, it's um, just um, a, a, a schmuzzle. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I think kind of what came whole... from that. Oh, go ahead. I think, you know, I mean, we kind of all realized that, and I think Google realized that after the October 2013, they realized that, you know, they'd created a shitstorm in terms of negative SEO, and that's why we haven't seen any kind of updates since then. They needed to do a refresh because sites which had been dinged since, you know, October 2013 already had one bad Christmas. Uh, and a really bad trading year. It was, you know, they had to they had to sort it out for this year, um, and I think they're still working on how to to sort it out. Uh, this was a refresh because they needed to rectify the cock up they'd made. Whether they will say it's a cock up or not, the point is, is innocents were nailed um, and have been sitting for a year. Um, and of course, webmasters had, whether they were innocent or not, had cleaned up their sites, but you can't leave these sites languishing for an indefinite amount of time. You know, it's like, you know, we've cleaned up, we've followed your guidelines, now you need to refresh and we need to get on with our lives. So I think they're still working on it, Jim, um, and that's why this was very, a very, very mild sort of thing. There was, there was like a, okay, if you've done the work, you've got out of jail free. Uh, well, not free because you've spent 10 months in it, but you've done the work, you can be released now. The sites that have been dinged now with it were just asking for it. You know, it, it was just real low-quality spam stuff because if you, look at black, if you look at the Black Hat forums, there's Black Hat guys having a laugh. Um, oh, how we escaped, blah blah blah. So the point is, this is a this was a very, very, uh, just a very low refresh to release people that have done the work to take down the serial idiots. Um, and I believe they're still trying to work through finding the the right balance. Totally agree. <coughs> okay, so we can move on from this one. No, Michael was going to say something before I absolutely rudely interrupted. Ah, no, no. Where are you, Michael? I mean, you you pretty much covered it. I mean, it was just going to be more or less what you, what you kind of stated. So we're we're good. We can go on. I'm happy to wait. Nah, you know, it'd just be a reiteration of, of <coughs> Tim's point. 
We like reiterations around here. <laughs> well, that's right. We're SEOs. Um, <laughs> oh, fine. Um, reiteration, yeah. I, I do think in the same way, yeah, Google's looking, had looked and found, oh, okay, here's what they at the start found some really easy, low bar ways to uh, go after sites that have been basically violating the guidelines in the link realm. And thought that, you know, that uh, they could either kind of figure out ways they can expand it further. They thought uh, that it wouldn't be as easy or as, as uh, prevalent as it would be once this uh, algorithm became well known. Um, but I think we've seen, you know, as Tim noted, <coughs> from the subsequent updates uh, that that hasn't been the case. That, that kind of weight of one whole year means they, they're either struggling, don't care, kind of like the pirate update. Um, my guess is they're struggling. And they, you know, you know, it's one thing going after the low end, but if they really need to make a dent, um, both on stopping people from, from doing kind of the black hat art as well as not allowing um, and not harming sites that are um, getting dinged through negative SEO, that's a far, far more challenging area where people are now literally trying to go after other sites. Um, and I think Dehan's been kind of on the for forefront of that down in, down in Australia talking about those, those whole issues that have been occurring there. So, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, look, they're going to they're gonna need some serious data to understand negative SEO. I mean, they already understand what's crap, okay? Yeah. But in terms of negative SEO, uh, they're going to need some serious data. And I, you know, if you're going to have a, a link-based penalty, you're always going to have problems because black hatters, for example, are always testing the, the limits to that, and and and, and um, you know, churn and burn sites are always testing the limits to that, and they will also inevitably be testing the limits towards negative SEO. Um, so if you have a links-based penalty. It will always be tested to the limit, and you will always be working on it. Now, if Bing and and and, and uh, you know and other search engines are able to just devalue low quality rather than create a link-based penalty, you know we can all just move on. You can tweak your a, a devaluation every now and again rather than having to make a cock up in terms of a, a link based penalty refresh it retweak it and you always at every time you're going to have a black hatter who is going to be testing the limits of it it's never going to end for you and there are always going to be innocence nailed in the middle well yeah so, and, and on top of that it's it's very similar to the payday one i mean unless you are at the same speed as those Responding, it, it, it's you're going to be behind, and and I think that people continually kind of forget the the, the issue with with what we'll just define as the crowd. The crowd can go at a lot faster rate than a. And I don't mean to say that that, that Google's stodgy, but it's a stodgy kind of top down organization of a few limited but very very brilliant people is going to take a lot longer than those who can quickly go through sites, turn, burn, do a lot of the testing, and see what's going to work. Um, yeah. it, it's just there's either more of them out there who are going to stumble upon it, or there's just as brilliant people elsewhere who are not necessarily working for Google but are, are just making a lot of money on the side. And unless Google can go at a faster clip, and that means you know weekly, daily, whatever it may need to be, um, it, it's just not going to, in my opinion, it's not going to work out very well in the yeah. long run. Yeah, and even with their spam, with their payday loan algo, I mean, frankly, that is just not even worth the, al the algorithmic Time coding that's written in. <laughs> you know, it's like, 
because it's only take it's only targeting towards one particular kind of thing, and it's not targeting other spam queries in the way it should be. And um, you know, like this new one that's you know arriving on the scene, Commanger or Commander or whatever the you know this gener ge generic Cialis. Mm -hmm. Bing is handling it fine. You know, the f uh, I think the first spam query that hits Bing is like position eight, where Google, the whole thing is riddled from page one down to page three. So, <laughs> come on, you know, the, if you're starting to, if you're being reactive with 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 crap links. That you're never gonna you're never gonna win unless you have a team there sitting 24 hours a day, just monitoring these specific things. And even then, you're still being reactive. Just create some kind of devaluation that manually devaluates any kind of low quality, and then you basically update what is low quality as a devaluation. You know, uh, as as it goes on. Um, I think that's the way forward for them, unless they've got, you know, unless, I mean, I'm sure they reckon they've got some other plan up their sleeves, but, you know, judging by this last year in terms of Penguin, yeah. I'm not, I lost control of my mouse there. Have we gone silent, have we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> All right, will we move on to the next? That's sure. the most random thing I've heard in ages. <laughs> All right, this is one uh, news item found by uh, um, our great friend uh, Edwin Yonk, who unfortunately can't be with us today, um, titled Google's Anti-Piracy. He said um, Google's anti-piracy uh, has tentacles. Um, since uh, last year, Google is reporting how it is fighting pirated content uh, across platforms. Uh, meaning that a site with pirated content will not only be hidden in Google Search, but also in Google AdSense. This year's report outlines a couple of uh, updates that Google made to that strategy. Today, we're publishing a refreshed How Google Fights uh, Privacy uh, report, um, which explains uh, how we combat piracy across our services. I thought I just read that. Um, this new version updates many of the numbers from the 2013 version and lists a few other developments in the past year. Um, and from the report, each time we receive a valid copyright removal notice for search, we also blacklist that page from receiving any AdSense advertising uh, in the future. Um, if Masataki Wasa was here, he'd probably be able to tell us that um, oh, they'd be blacklisting more than the page. Um, Probably people are losing their accounts. Um, the, I, I won't read read the rest, guys, but um, uh, I'll leave it um, on on the on the screen. Um, um, any comments on this? Oh, two years to update an algorithm. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, they care about this one. <laughs> Although I gotta give them credit, they did um, they did at least change it up a little bit to try to highlight um, more with through like kind of either the knowledge graph or other areas of uh, sites that are um, legal. In this case, I can actually say legal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, it's just. It goes a bit against um, the concepts of you know what Google wants to show. I mean, it may be an unfortunate reality, but for a lot of people, they want just what they want to want to want to watch. They want to watch it right away. They don't want to go through DRM services or anything. So this is 
this is something where Google is actually not providing the things to the user. Um, so it, <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's something they probably they really probably dislike. Um, and you know how you know it, it goes back to as well. It's a lot of the larger sites that are not very quick on their feet. Um, how many of them are quickly putting up their content online once it shows? Have their site ready, prepping that in advance for the next episode. Yeah. Very few. So I think um, I think it's just been a challenge in some areas generally for the whole industry. And then just on Google's end, it's not not a priority. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if we don't hear about this update, this kind of update for another few years anyway. Any other comments on um, Google's anti-piracy policies? I, I know years and years ago. I, I do have on. one other one, which would be interesting, is um, <clears throat> how the anti-piracy policy might work for um, what you call it for for. Uh, <clears throat> um, Kind of with the WTO, I know that um, uh, certain Caribbean nations are because of the U.S. and kind of policies against online gambling. Certain <coughs> uh, Caribbean nations are able to uh, fight back, and uh, they were able to do some. They were able to get the right to, um, I guess, basically violate uh, IP or something. I, I have to find the article, but. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out uh, online. If that would be allowed by uh, through Google's piracy update and and how the WTO works between nations. So, be interesting to uh, take a look at. But I haven't up, I haven't seen anything for a while now, so I don't know where that that stands. But uh, yeah, that's the only other thing I'd add. keep an eye on. All right. Uh, any other comments on uh, the Google's uh, anti-piracy policy? Lost one of Micah's roadies. Um, okay. Um, oh, this is where I made a fool of myself. Um, um, talking about. Um, uh, the um, new uh, um, product uh, released by Google, uh, a USB key uh, um, private certificate, um, which is used to create a public certificate to be shared with uh, a, a website. Um, um, as part of, um, if you wanted to look th look at this on the web, uh, um, the, the Fido Alliance, uh, the website is FidoAlliance.org. At least I hope it is. Um, so that's out of my, off the top of my head. Um, but um, one thing which protects people against spammers and, and, and see spammers um, find it much easier um, to use a credible account uh, to spam with. Um, and before the days of two-step authentication, a brute force attack where where they continually uh, um, hit a, um, a username and password and, until they happen to uh, get the right one um, made, made, made things weak. But two-step, where, where uh, um, Google actually rings a, a number, um, either a mobile number or a landline, um, to provide the code to verify uh, the logon um, is an amazing thing. Now, I made a fool of myself on this particular post um, because I, I felt that um, this was Google going it alone and uh, also um, that um, uh, I, I, I don't trust Google enough um, for Google to be the, the gatekeeper of the internet. And um, as it turns out, my, my, my uh, 
uh, views on that were totally groundless and I have to apologise to Dave Sparks who was kind enough to uh, provide me um, um, with a, a, a great um, answer which um, made it clear to me and uh, I thank Dave Sparks for that. Um, so would you like to talk about me making a fool of myself, um, Edwin, um, or anybody? We do it all the time, Jim. So, look, I mean, it's, you know, it's just be rehashing everything else over and over again. <laughs> Par for the course. So, so you're saying it's become a habit with me, is it? It's, it's just part of the culture, you know? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's very kind of you. Uh, uh, you're, you're raising the question, uh, created an answer, so other people will learn from, from your foolishness. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm glad uh, to help. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, do, try, try harder to be more foolish in the future. <laughs> um, I, one thing that, that generally bothers me with these things is... Um, <clears throat> having to have either a dongle or, um, uh, you know, some unique app. That always kind of bothers me um, from a standpoint of, like, just allow, like, I have a phone, call the number, send a text or whatever, versus, like, having to use a separate um, device to plug in or you know, download your own specific, their specific app. Those things always kind of bother me. Um, it's kind of like blotware, essentially. So, it, it, I don't know. I, I, I don't, yeah, I just don't like those types of things. I, I think it's too much of pushing kind of some of their stuff than it is to um, simplify the issue and while making it still secure. I think it's, that's just my general preference, though. So. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. In the U.S., um, for online banking, do you have those um, um, little pass keys that you, um, um, when you're challenged, you, you click the button and uh, it gives you uh, um, a six-digit number which you enter um, to get onto your bank? Um, it, it varies by bank. I mean, you, you've got... Um, so... <clears throat> Beyond CAPTCHA, if, if you've forgotten stuff, then usually you've set up, like, questions in advance that you got to answer. Um, sometimes you get a PIN code. Um, it, it just kind of varies here or there. Um, this, is, this is what um, I've got. So, basically, you've nice got, obviously, a, hey? <laughs> no, so... Um, Hang on. No, so basically what it is, is for online banking with me is obviously you have a big massive passcode. Once you've entered into that section, then you've got to put your your card in, in there. Then you enter your PIN number for your, your bank card. Then this machine will give you off a two, four, three, five, a 10 digit PIN code automatically generated each time which then gets entered into your so it's 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't I would go so far as it's unhackable because it hasn't been hacked yet but um, it's also and it does it three different times so if you are logged in and then you need to make a payment to someone with backs a backs payment um, you th it then requires you at just before the end it requires you again to log into the <laughs> pin sentry to create another five digit to re-verify that so they, they, you know it's seriously it's so seriously we have, secure in the US we have this app it's called Venmo where we go and <clears throat> it's basically a social network for sending people money and explaining why we've sent the money you connect your account you're done and everybody then just yeah. goes along. There's no 20 steps just to send somebody 
five bucks for dinner. <laughs> no, you can do that. You can do that. I mean, you can do all the. Um, I mean, this is for my online banking. You know, this is for <laughs> setting up standing orders, accounts. But you, we've got all of that for for a, a minimum of twenty. You know, twenty pounds. Hmm. Um, you know, just free swipe, and you know, not even. You don't even have to put in pin pin things. You just. What do you call it? Flip and hover over the the machine. Um, but yeah, I'm talking thousands of pounds and tens of thousands that if you want to transfer and bank with, and you know they've got to make it secure. And yeah. it's been around for about five five years now. And as far as I know, they've never been hacked. So, so yeah, pretty secure. The only bitch is is you got to go with that thing on holiday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because if you want to do any online banking, it's just yeah. Yeah, I think that's where the USB for like the more enterprise level would be incredibly helpful. So when I was just on my travels, uh, I actually switched off the two-step because I was more worried about losing my phone, and therefore losing access to everything because that's got the app on it than someone hacking into my account. Uh, so I actually switched it off to that. and So that's a kind of weakness. Uh, there's always a weakness in these things. Is uh, uh, you've, you've got a physical piece of thing that you're carrying around in your pocket. You lose that. Uh, they're all backups. You can print off stuff. But more than likely, if you lose one thing, you'll lose your backups, you lose this, that, and the other. So I actually had to... Uh, weaken my security while I traveled so that I knew I could get back into it myself. Yeah. I see uh, Rob Mars has joined us from the Netherlands and Edwin Young also from the Netherlands. It must be, uh, um, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Rob, l last week I, I, I began to ask you, um, you had to drop off, but um, um, you had the uh, um, Netherlands Google Top Contributors uh, meetup, um, and apparently that that was a lot of fun. Did you want to talk on that, or will we move to the next uh, news item? It's not not much to talk about. Just that you meet uh, a lot of uh, fellow uh, PCs uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, from areas you don't really speak to normally. A lot of uh, Gmail and Nexus uh, guides. And I normally only uh, communicate with uh, the search and webmasters uh, PCs. But uh, such a meeting is, uh, is very nice. And uh, they organized it very well. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, Interested in what? They're hiring huh? to become a PC or a rising star. I don't think I'd ever be a um, Google Top contributor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, not not? Sure that, I'm not sure that it might, my services would be uh, at value. <laughs> well, as long as you... Uh, uh, help people, then there is a chance. You don't have to be a Google fanboy to be a top contributor. Uh, you can have critic. An advantage is that they will listen. Yeah, no, uh, I, I mean, that, 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 I don't, I don't doubt that's true, um, and. Um, I'll never forget you saying, uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, it, it's it's not something that um, I, 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 I've aspired to. Um, I mean, well, you're yeah. helping people with your hangout, so... That, well, that doesn't help to become a TC, does it? 
in the English form, it's it's very hard. Uh, you should select uh, either a, a product that doesn't have that many uh, PCs, or you should choose another language. <laughs> Does one have to die before you can get in? What? What's that? Does a TC have to die before you can get in? To jive? No. Die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've just oh, started. No, 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 no. It, it, There was no limitation. Uh, I, I think the 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 amount of TCs grows uh, uh, doubles every year, or, uh, something like that. I, I've just restarted in the forums yeah, and the things in there as well. Who's in there, Tony? Tim answers a few questions. I've seen. I restarted about maybe a week ago. Uh, I kind of got dismayed a lot uh, a while back. I decided to try it again. And uh, yeah, Tim. Tim's there answering the odd question. Is that okay, Jim? Well, I like it. I mean, Tim's a free agent. I've got no choice. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, um, if, if he were my son, uh, I'm not sure if I'd guide him in that direction. <laughs> so, so you're not going to approve of my uh, going back in there? Oh, look, no, 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 look, I, I, I think it's fine. I, my only criticism, of, of, and the only one that really I... Um, um, was involved in, and, and but I was involved for a long time, uh, from about mid 2009 until about 2012, I guess. Uh, I was still doing it um, when uh, Google Plus started. Um, but my only beef is that um, there is, um, uh, and as as you said, uh, Rob, um, that. Um, um, top contributors don't need to uh, follow the Google line, but certainly that the top contributors on the Google Webmaster Forum follow the Google line. Um, if anybody uh, appears there with a with a case of uh, negative SEO, um, the, the the entire thread um, um, is taken up with abuse from um, top contributors and rising stars. Uh, discrediting the, the user for having the temerity to suggest that uh, they didn't place those links. Um, that's my beef um, with um, um, the Google Webmaster Forum, that there's no semblance of um, fairness or, or no attempt um, to um, um, give a fair answer uh, in a case, a contentious case like that, a case of negative SEO. Something that's non-contentious, um, I'm sure... Uh, um, that that's fine, but um, it, it's um, duplicitous um, um, to do what they do sometimes. Uh, and I'm, I, I haven't been there for a year, so uh, um, maybe it, uh, obviously if, if um, Tony McCreeth is there and Tim Cap is there, maybe I'll go back. <laughs> that's uh, and yeah, that's one one of the reasons I kind of got dismayed and moved away from it and uh, it's so far I've seen there's still that happening uh, but then uh, if, uh, if I'm there there's a chance uh, at least it gives another opinion so it's not just people slagging you off because you've asked a question it's uh, you can get a mix so uh, maybe it's better to be there than walk away because you don't like what's happening. Mm, yeah, well, well, actually, to, to be honest, um, what um, um, put me off um, um, the um, Google Webmaster forums was um, the, the way that they um, sacked um, Lyndon Nahr. Um, he um, 
was goaded into a, a, an argument by uh, another top contributor who's a, a venomous little bitch. Um, and um, he um, um, responded to um, the goading and, um, um, you know, if they'd at least um, said, you know, one out, all out and, and uh, um, took out uh, Lyndon Nah uh, and, and, and the top contributor, um, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of it. If, um, uh, just trying to think, I can't remember her name now. Um, she didn't use her own name, she had a, a pseudonym. Um, but um, yeah, um, Linda Nah, who was without doubt the most prolific answer of questions on that uh, community and somebody who really took it to heart. And uh, um, in those days, um, all questions got an answer. Um, these days, not even close to that. Um, Maybe what uh, when I last looked a year ago, maybe 25% of the questions were getting answered. I mean, Google would have their own stats, but um, what do you see there, Tony? Did you see a lot of questions, um, people posting there, wasting their time posting and uh, not, get, not getting anyone to respond at all? I'd say response, <laughs> but uh, an answer is different. Uh, so all of, almost all of them get a response. Uh, but uh, yeah, to a, a satisfactory answer is probably quite different. Uh, but I, I've only been back in for a week, so uh, yet to see uh, what it's like and uh, if I enjoy it. Like, uh, it, it, and it's not just uh, it's the sort of questions that are asked are what gets me interested in it, uh, and what can put me off is the behaviour of people in the community on both sides. It, it's like, like, well, the uh, communities here, uh, they're all well moderated, there's no slagging up, it's, it's all polite, whereas there seems to be a bit, the, uh, yeah, it gets personal. So hopefully uh, it's a little bit better than it was. So you're saying it, it still gets personal now? Uh, definitely seeing a bit of that already, like uh, the whole negative SEO, uh, straight in on uh, saying your backlink profile looks dodgy, therefore you did it. And I don't quite get that proof thing, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's straight into that kind of uh, you're guilty until you can prove innocent. And you can't prove innocent when... Uh, they're only looking. The, the, uh, how can you prove you didn't do something? Yeah. How um, how about we we take up a collection and uh, um, get some people from a, a, an organisation like um, say Fiverr or what, and we'll just get them to lodge uh, um, negative SEO um, um, uh, questions. <laughs> It'd be worth a hundred bucks, wouldn't it, to um, um, see what happened? <laughs> I see why a lot of these TCs don't have their Google Plus profiles in public. Yeah, and yet if all everything was all fair and above board, shouldn't be a problem. You know, mm. I mean. Why? I mean, why generate the animosity? Hello, William Rock. All right. Um, moving on. I don't know if we've got another question. We do. Oh, yes, we do. This is the Google Inbox, um, which um, David. I went out, uh, um, it didn't dawn on me, but um, uh, as soon as he said it, um, it, it, it could be um, that this new Google Inbox um, is um, a, a possible replacement for Google+. Plus. Do you guys see it that way? Uh, what is it? It's a, um, 
like a more of a, an app version of um, Gmail. Um, well, there's a couple well, different. Well, actually, it's a it's a mashup of uh, Google Now and uh, Gmail. So yeah, you get your cards uh, from uh, Google Now and the messages uh, or the the emails uh, from Gmail, basically. Is it only on uh, phones then? Yes, it's, it's it's only an app at the moment. I think it's not. Um, wait, no, I think it's also online. Inbox dot. Well, it's also basically only, only thing right now. You you can also reach it uh, via By the way, uh, <laughs> Yes, yes. I see it's inbox.google.com. Uh, well, you were very quiet. Uh, if you can turn it up, uh, William. Okay. That's what I'm working yeah, on. Well, your, your volume is right down. You might have to turn the microphone gain up a bit. Um, okay. Thank you. And that, that, that we can hear that now. Look, I, I just noticed uh, that this um, post that um, we're talking about uh, was shared by AJ Cohn. And um, um, AJ um, has uh, lymphoma. He uh, advised on. Uh, um, Google Plus around about I think about two and a half weeks ago, or th maybe, might be three weeks now. But um, anyway, AJ Cohn is a, a, he 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 appeared on on our 100th episode, um, one of the US's leading SEOs. Um, he um, he's he's a great believer in the power of uh, um, he's a great believer in magical thoughts and the power. Of positive thinking, um, and um, he spends a lot of his time saying, "I will um, beat this, or I will get better." Um, anyway, I wasn't a believer before, but if AJ Kane is a believer, I am now, um, and I ask you guys too to uh, um, believe in um, magical thoughts and the power of um, positive thinking. I, you know, who knows? And work and. Uh, Another one plugging the uh, the app as well. So um, Joshua Berg, I saw that post this morning about uh, he's actually in the beta right now. So he'll have some information about this pretty soon as well on his blog. Okay, I'm not sure what that's got to do with um, our good friend um, uh, AJ Cohn and uh, his battle well, with lymphoma. They're both actually. Oh, I'm sorry, but they're both talking about the Google Inbox. I thought that's where you're kind of headed with that. So. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, um, guys. Do you think there's a possibility that this um, mashup um, um, will be the replacement for Google Plus? No, no, I don't think so. It's uh, it's more of a replacement for uh, Gmail. Uh, at least that, that's what I understand from it. Certainly, I don't have an invite, so I've just requested one. From the from the screenshots that I've seen others post, it's it's going to be more of a I think a temporary just a plugin that they can use, and then maybe maybe actually put it right into the UI. But I think you know just like Google tests everything with a bunch of different people first. Um, until we all get an invite, it's going to be kind of hard for us to know exactly. That's kind of where I was talking about with uh, Joshua Berg. He's actually doing, uh, he's in the beta right now, and that's why he, was, he posted that this morning. So I'm imagining that we can probably find some more information on his blog or on his Google Plus wall about, about maybe some screenshots of what it might look like. Uh, because they, uh, from what I understand, it's live, um, but only for invite only, kind of like Google Domains was. Well, still is. It's invite only, but uh, it's a test. Now, that's the way I look at it. It's not going to be a replacement. It's just to be an add-on that they can say, "Hey, I want this portion on my uh, piece." And then after a while, kind of like all the other inbox tools uh, for for Gmail, just kind of turns into that UI, and so you don't really have a choice. So we'll see what happens. With it. I'm excited. I want to get a, uh, an invite here soon to test it. 
Well, the, the invite-only uh, can also just be a, a marketing uh, thing uh, instead of a test. Well, I mean, it's coming. The invite's coming from Google, so yeah, it's probably marketing for uh, beta testing, right? What do we got, Rob? Uh, He's showing us something down there. Oh, uh, do you have any invites, Rob? <laughs> no. It didn't request uh, at the TC. <laughs> no special privileges for TS or TCs or uh, RS, I'm sure. Because um, even as an RS, I didn't get an invite either. But come on, that's not the that's not the privilege of a TC or an RS, right? There's no privileges other than learning. But that's my opinion. I learned from the webmaster forums, but I'm dragging on here. I heard you guys talking about that earlier, so I had to plug that. Hmm. Well, um, I, I can't see um, if, if there are any more questions after uh, news items after this one. Are, are there any? Is there one after this? Did you already discuss the BBC uh, list? Uh... Um, no, there, so there must be another one. Let's let's do that. Uh, and we've got another one that we've discovered too, um, Edwin. Um, oh, this one. Um, this was um, a, a posted. Um, was that you, Edwin, that posted this or not? No, oh, no it must have been me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Google will have to pay for links to Spanish newspapers. Um, that's, uh, so that's um, Spain and Germany now, Edwin, is it, that uh, um, are doing that? Um, well, this article is actually blocked uh, for me. Uh, I don't have a subscription at the Times uh, or the Sunday Times. So um, it doesn't give me that much information uh, about this new Spanish law. Um, I think uh, it was, was still... Uh, in the parliament, uh, they had to vote. Not sure if the, if if they pass or uh, or if there are other things they need to do. Uh, maybe the, to the senate or. Um, but basically, uh, uh, publishers get a cut from uh, uh, Google's uh, AdWords. Uh, as far as I understand, which is rather weird, uh, to be honest, because first you you have to determine uh, who are the publishers. So, uh, are are those only the newspapers, or or are uh, or are bloggers also uh, publishers? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have no clue how this is going to work. Uh, anybody else? Okay, let, let's go to the next um, news item, um, and we've had a fail. Okay, no, we're broken. Okay, just bear with me a second. Has anybody got a list of our, our questions? Can, can somebody uh, cover the next item? Um. News item uh, 19. There's already, already a queue time, so and it must be number 20, which is the BBC to publish uh, forgotten page list. Uh, you're still screen sharing. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 go I'm gone now. Not sure if that's what no, you want. I'm still not.
Anyway, don't mind me. You guys go ahead. Um. The BBC uh, is going to publish a list of uh, links to their articles um, that were or are removed from Google uh, under the rights to be forgotten rule, um, which basically uh, means that it's not being uh, forgotten anymore. Um, the um, editor policy head, uh, David Jordan, says uh, that the public has the a right to, re, uh, to remember. So it, it, it's going to be uh, a little bit awkward because uh, Google is uh, removing it from the search and then um, the BBC is adding it to the, uh, to the website again. Uh, Personally, I've, I've, I think the whole right to be forgotten uh, should be removed. It is, it's a crazy law. Uh, we just need a society that is more tolerant uh, towards small uh, misdemeanors. What's a small misdemeanor? Sorry? What is a small misdemeanor? Sorry, Tony. Well, uh, Maybe you were uh, uh, got a fine for uh, public uh, drunk, or uh, you went bankrupt uh, sometime. Um, I don't. Think, for example, I don't think if you uh, commit a murder that uh, uh, you'll have the right to be uh, forgotten. Uh, I think that, that is uh, public information or. Uh, that, that should be in the news articles and nobody has uh, the right to uh, remove that uh, fact. Edwin, it's definitely a tricky subject, that's for sure. Um, you know, Google's having to, to play with a lot of different pieces of information, but if you look at it in the United States, I think that politician. You know, that that information, if it's gone, then how is somebody going to figure out what that politician did to that? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can you can go a lot of different ways with that in different countries, but I think even I want to, you know, there's got to be information on the person. They did something wrong, but it's going to be hard to get it off. Everything. Like, like I said, we, we need to more Say that again, Rob. The, the information isn't removed. It's just removed from the service in Europe. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, it's still there. So, basically, anybody can build another crawler. In the USA, you won't even notice it. Yeah, I haven't really been following that once too much because I think that, you know, it's... It, you're going to find the data elsewhere, it, it's, even if it's not in the Google search crawler. You know, I think that still you're going to find it. If, if somebody's going to want to find that information, they're going to find it regardless. So getting it off removed from the search engine is one thing, but I think uh, but getting it removed from the place. The problem was, of course, that, that when you just typed in a name, some terrible, old, useless information would show up in Google. Mm. Okay. And that's what they want to get out of it. Not if if you search for something very uh, particular, you, you can always find it. And if you can't find it in Google, you will find it in Bing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's not what it was all about. It was about uh, search results that that were as such worthless. Yeah, yeah I see that portion. Because basically that's just low quality signal anyways and it needs to be pulled out, you know, regardless. I bet you there's you know, an algorithm that they can throw for that, but, but that's a good point, Rob. That that makes um, more sense to me. I appreciate that explanation. Because I, I, I've been trying to figure this one out for a while, but I just haven't spent a lot of time with it. Um, kind of well, with, with, with regards to the, the, the uh, 
the search results, um, the BBC is reporting here um, um, a story about uh, the Royal IRA. Um, let me see. Um, Where's the quote? Um, so the, the, there are there are uh, links uh, to um, to the BBC that are, that that are are valuable and are removed because of the, the right to be forgotten. Um, and I think that's that's just wrong. Um, I I think that Google uh, granted. Far more requests than they should have uh, yeah. or could have. And yeah, but uh, I also think they do that deliberately to to show how uh, how that can hurt the search results. Yes, Rather than uh, be very strict, they they are very broad and and showing that that it doesn't work. Yeah, but. The, the, the ruling from uh, the European uh, Court uh, of Justice is, is broad, so... Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't blame uh, Google for that. Uh. <laughs> well, I, I, I think but that's my personal opinion, that they want to influence the public opinion about it. Yeah, yeah, as far as they can. Same with the BBC. I bet you Google's loving what the BBC's doing. Because it's costing them a, an awful lot of work, of course. Yeah, and there's also no... People, uh, there's also no formal appeal process. Uh, as far as I know, in the ruling, uh, an appeal process isn't mentioned, so that that, that ruling um, is is too vague. Uh, I I think they they only are are uh, uh, have to examine the complaint and act accordingly, or something like that. Yeah. I, I think they also don't have to uh, report to the BBC uh, or to other publishers that uh, links were removed, uh, but, but they are doing that, so that's probably uh, a way to uh, uh, ob object against this particular ruling. It sounds like a very uh, manual job for Google to be doing all those requests and going through and filtering and, and you know, if I know Google... And I'm all by... Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Rob, you and I have seen throughout the years that it basically, uh, sorry, I've got water running in the background. Um, yeah, I'm going to As long as you don't do it in the foreground, uh, it's okay with us. <laughs> okay, okay, so uh, now I've lost my train of thought, Rob, but basically with that, you know, automation, automation was where I was headed. Uh, with automation, you've got uh, Google basically going to say, okay, it's all manual process, but then how do I take it to the next level? You know, how do I actually make it so it, it can filter, like they've done with links and they've done with content? So, Yeah, but this, this is something they, they can't do with a... Uh, they have to do it manually. Uh, they, they have to For now. judge it. Yeah, they, they, they will never be able to do that uh, algorithmic. You don't think so? I mean, there, there's got to be a way where they can automate some of it, where basically is this a false positive person, you know, request, and then basically put it into a queue possibly, or then have another one that goes into a different queue. But there's got to be a way, a way to make that automation a little bit better. They, they will be able to, to automate yeah. a, a lot, but but not everything. Uh, no, you can't because, because it's a it's, person it, that has to know. It's about it. the feeling uh, a certain page has uh, uh, for a certain query. And 
it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how that kind of pulls together. So, Rob, I think we lost. Oh, there you are. You're moving your head. I thought we lost you for a second. <laughs> you were oh, too no, slow. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I I, I see uh, your point of that too. Basically, I, you know, there's so much involved with Google and the investment of doing this that uh, you know I'm sure they're probably going with the BBC doing what they just did too. Um, that that doesn't help in the process of what they've already done, and now they've got to go back and do it again. Um, and then how, how does that process happen even from other uh, organizations, news media outlets, and so, you know, not just the BBC, but what does it happen to some of the other uh, properties out there on the web that have that same information and content? I don't know. Yeah, but, but, but what if the judges decide that uh, it also applies to libraries? Is somebody going in with a scissor there and, and cut out all the newspapers? I don't know. It, it, to me, it sounds a little ridiculous you know, to, to do that because, I mean, that's the same thing. I mean, imagine that's where my example was the same thing. What are they going to do? Go into a, a library here and clip out all the things and nobody can read this anymore? And, and then, you know, if I want to find it, I'm going to find it through a different browser or, diff or sorry, a different search engine, like you said. I might not go through Google to find it, but if I'm going to find it, I'm I'm going to find it, you know, somewhere on the internet. Yeah, but that that that's also why it's it's for for results that don't matter anymore, and that has to be judged. Yeah, and that's uh, very hard to open. Yeah, well, look at the links, and look how far we got with uh, Penguin. I mean, we never thought we'd get as far as we are with Penguin without, uh, you know. We heard there was a lot of hurt, I'm sure, but then there was also a lot of uh, recovery. Is but that was automated, right? So they they finally figured out how to fix that. So that's why I think you know in the future they'll figure out a way to make this a little bit less of a manual process, but still going back to the independent uh, personal touch to it. Because that's Google, you know, when they have to you know touch something like that. No, um, no, no. What happens here is that uh, uh, the uh, court of justice. Uh, didn't look at um, uh, the freedom of speech, for example. Um, they only looked at the right to be uh, forgotten, and they didn't weigh in uh, the freedom of speech. Uh, they also cannot do that because you have to go to another court. You have to go to the uh, European uh, Human Rights Court for that. Okay. Um, so and that that is basically missing in in this ruling uh, from uh, uh, from the Court of Justice. Um, there's no uh, balancing between uh, different uh, uh, rights. It's, they only looked at the right to be forgotten and nothing else. That makes sense. The other thing that they're also missing is the whole technology side of things. So that their, their decisions are making some interesting things in technology that may or may not be possible. Yes. Uh, for example, for uh, uh, public announcements, uh, in some countries or most countries, you have to announce uh, when a, a person is bankrupt in a national paper. Uh, that that article, uh, uh, what was that meta tagger or header uh, available till or something like that? Mm -hmm. And then after that period, for example, uh, you're not allowed uh, to work in a specific uh, industry anymore. Uh, um, in, in the Spanish case, it was uh, uh, real estate. Uh, the person uh, wasn't allowed to work for five or ten years in real estate anymore. Well, then say uh, uh, make make that available till and then five years uh, from now. Uh, after those five years, Google dropped it from the the index. There's nothing that Google has to do then, and it's fair. Uh, the, the person uh, uh, doesn't see it anymore after five years, because after five years it's not relevant anymore. Before that, it, it was so problem solved. But now we ha uh, there there is a whole uh, construction that Google has to value every uh, uh, search result, and uh, it's crazy. The whole uh, ruling of the, the uh, uh, of the Court of Justice is crazy, uh, and they, they probably don't understand the technical side, uh, like the, the header. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't. I, I don't agree with this. Not in, in the way it is, but uh, I, I had through the forum. We do get a lot of requests to help people remove or get removed from the search results for irrelevant searches, irrelevant uh, results. And there are some some really bad cases where, where uh, for instance, uh, a person who whose daughter died nine years ago, and every time he, he searches for his own uh, name, his, uh, his surname, Articles about the death of his daughter uh, submerge, and it's to nobody's interest anymore in such case. But he 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 was crying every time he was searching. Uh, he wrote, and such kind of things is. is <laughs> you bring, and and Rob, we bring up a good point. We see some. Uh, we see a lot of those in the forums. Uh, as far as you know. Uh, Google search area as well as in uh, the webmaster forum. So basically, the uh, you know, ranked lost areas where I hang out a lot too. But yeah, it, you see some heart wrenching ones in there, and that's where we actually can uh, bring those to the top and figure out how we can get those resolved. Uh, but that's where the TC I think comes into play when you can actually you know uh, explain your message properly. And what you're trying to accomplish, the problem you have, and then there's dialogue that goes along with it. But then if it's something that, you know, somebody can do something about or try to get something done, that TC will push it to the top. Um, I've seen that a ton of times where people are, you know, the TC will move it. Now, I'm still RS, so I can't move things like that. But, uh, you know, I think it's really neat to see the, the TCs jump in like that and just help out. And I participate in a lot. Image search especially, we see a lot of... Uh, Images that uh, want they want to delete the same way, Rob. You know, the, the uh, child maybe has passed away or something like that, and, and they want that off of Google Images. And so we see that in, in Google search form all the time. Not all the time, but you know, you, you get the randoms that basically is trying to get rid of an image that all they've got to do is log into their account and remove it too. But you know, if you can't get access to your account, then that makes it a little difficult, right? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the LinkedIn is 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 well known for for uh, being unable to remove the the your your page with them because they replace it with a a page that says this page, namely da 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 da, da doesn't exist anymore. The da 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 da, da always stays in there. And if that's your name or your daughter's name or whatever, then you can't remove it, and LinkedIn won't remove it. Uh, so it would be good if that could be taken out of the service. Good point. I think there's no, also sorry. we can do that. I mean, that would be something that would be in, in Google's favor. Let's look at all the different uh, Google Plus pros, uh, profiles that are being added, and you know, when something you know somebody does pass away, how do you? follow through with that uh, information, otherwise it's going to be on the net forever. Um, and then your family's going to have to get rid of it, so you know that, that might be something that uh, you have you know, a secondary contact in case I do pass away, please send all passwords to this. <laughs> but it's not real right now. I think Google does have a uh, something about if you're inactive for so long. I, th I think there is something about Dealing with death on the accounts. Can't remember the details there. Now we'll have to check into that. But that's that's. Uh, I know that LinkedIn, like like you know, you guys said that uh, that that right there has got that page that this is no longer available. And I, I think Twitter does the same thing. But uh, I'll have to check into that Google Plus. Thank you. I'm just looking it up for you, and and uh, I think I know where it is. Um, I'll share my screen once I find it. Back to the account manager, I think it's called. What's it called? Uh, inactive account manager. I'm just looking at the it now. Uh, I'll uh, post it and for you guys. 
Thank you, sir. So, uh, you set a timeout period uh, from the last time you log in. You get alerted. Uh, and you have trusted uh, contact. I, I, I just uh, set it for one day, and uh, if I don't log in after a day, that they'll know I must be dead. Or you forgot. <laughs> Or you got to see now. <laughs> I think I'm already there. <laughs> or just lost your internet connection. Uh, I, I would set that a little bit longer, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> on the. Uh, and for Tony, it's just a night in the town, huh? On me. <laughs> I said for you it could be just a night in the town. <laughs> I, I don't get out much. Um, Tony McCreith um, drinks at more pubs than I do. He's known, known, known in um, almost every pub in Australia and he's, he's allowed into half of them apparently. Oh, he's, known, he's known in Europe too. <laughs> Everybody speaks about him in Europe. <laughs> Make sure you guys don't hit that uh, delete my account after the bottom. Uh, <laughs> that would really suck, to be honest with you. Especially if you have it set like Rob does with one day. <laughs> on the, uh, you're talking about people showing up on inappropriate searches. Uh. A couple of years back, Matt Cutts replied to an, a question of mine on, on one of his videos. And uh, the question was that uh, I was working in an orphanage and they'd been repairing the girls' showers. And the problem was was that people searching for girls' showers were getting the orphanage. Oh, and no. so I said, uh, is there any way to uh, say, please don't put us in <laughs> search results when it's that sort of search. And I suggested the idea of a negative uh, meta keywords tag. <laughs> this was a long time back. Uh, and he actually replied to it on video. Uh, basically says, yeah, I understand the problem. No, we're not going to have a negative <laughs> keyword tag. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it is a bit of a, a problem. Uh, there are a lot of these edge cases where just you show up for weird things and your content matches. It's a shame the world can't be perfect, eh? <laughs> we haven't worked out that algorithm yet. Tony, remember way back when uh, the search engine just came out, what, 1998, 1997, was it? That was pretty bad. Oh, way earlier than that. What was it? Uh, I wasn't born. Alta <laughs> Vista. No, no, I was talking about Google. When f Google first came out, look how far it is now. I mean, with the artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm, you know, knowledge vault, all those different things, connecting the dots is so awesome. But also com comes back to the same part where that uh, useless information can easily be found now because it has all that in, this, in its vault. So how do we, you know, how do they tailor the vault to, you know, get this stuff actually controlled? It's the question. On the other, I, you you could also say uh, they are already working more than fifteen years on that search engine, and it's still serving a lot of crap. <laughs> Different crap now, though. Different crap, but <laughs> at least the, at least a lot of the bad crap's on. Well, Tony, going back to that uh, uh, girls in uh, images, if it is uh, being flagged by safe search, you can say, uh, no, don't show me, uh, or uh, I'm safe for children. Oh, well, this was an orphanage, so the, the, the website article was just about trying to get donations to get money to build a girl's showers. 
Uh, I, th I think nowadays maybe Google's a bit better to understand the context. So if a guy uh, searches for pictures of girls in showers, they use their semantic and web of things to realize that the article's not about pictures of girls in showers, it's about uh, the shower itself. So hopefully Google understands better. Than it was, um, if they were uh, flagged as adult content, then you can request uh, uh, to say, no, this is uh, not adult con content. No, it didn't get flagged, uh, but people looking for adult content were going there. They, they yeah. got a lot of traffic, and they could see from the keywords that the intent of the visitor was not was not to donate. <laughs> uh. do, do I understand you correctly that that orphanage was using pictures of girls in showers to raise money for the showers? <laughs> I to optimize it. <laughs> it, it, could, uh, it could make a bit of money out of it. <laughs> hey, Tony, speaking about the right to be forgotten, you're going to have to delete this part now, too. <laughs> oh, well, at least he's not li linking back to the orphanage. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Google hasn't got a it's transcript thing up to full speed yet, has it? It, it can't deal with four hour videos. No, they're only working 10 years on that one, so. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty darn good at that. If we go back to even the, when uh, YouTube was first learning about cats, I mean, there was an experiment on learning cats uh, with the computer machine learning algorithm, and that can pull all of your content and your text out of a video. So basically, it just cre creates it down to the text version and then crawls that information from your video. So it's four hours long. That's a lot of transcript. But uh, before, you can go way back when, um, you know, uh, Moz, uh, Rand Fishkin was actually having to do outpaper, you know, his, his transcripts on every one of his uh, Whiteboard Fridays, right? Now, that was because the transcripting wasn't the greatest and it wouldn't output it and it was like, You'd have to have like a medical transcriptionist to go through and really type it up uh, to, to be able to be fast and, and do that. And that's what I used to do way back in the bat in the past because one of the company owners that I worked with had a medical transcription company. We used his to do all of our videos, um, but we had more accuracy. You know, that was more of an actual additional article because they were watching the video and then writing about what you know what was being told, but not very as accurate. But you know, I'm I'm going. I'm going too far, but yes, it's possible to get that information in semantic. Does, you know, some did the uh, transcriptions, uh, didn't he, for the first uh, Hangouts, Jim? So, sorry, what was that, um, Rob? Your son was doing the transcripts for the first Hangouts, wasn't he? He 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 was, um, but it, it's such a, a labor-intensive task, uh, um, and an hour of. Um, uh, recording translates to around about six or seven hours work by the time it's um, listened to uh, at slow speed, typed and uh, then checked. Um, you know, um, so yeah, it's really not practical. Now, have you ever used Jim? Uh, there's a couple automated tools that I found out there on the web uh, that have been pretty darn accurate, where it pulls that same information out, and then you just kicks out a document that you can then go back and um, modify. Um, and I believe that's the same tool. One of them in particular was the same one that Rand Fishkin was using. So if you go back to Whiteboard Fridays, you'll find uh, a link to the transcription. I don't know if he's still using it, but you have to go back in the older uh, pieces, and you'll be able to find a really cheap, inexpensive uh, automation tool that they do it. That's well, actually, actually um, the, the issue is that... Um, you, you, you can buy transcription tools and, and train them uh, to um, recognize your voice and so on. But the problem we face um, with um, our um, Domicia Questions Hangouts is that we have many different uh, voices, many different accents, um, and 
it, it simply um, it, it wouldn't work uh, in this case. I mean, those tools rely on being trained uh, to recognise um, the way the person speaks. Um, but yeah, we're, we're a little bit far away from a, from something that which could um, automatically transcribe um, what you know what we say on these hangouts. Good point. I mean, that's how I used it for when I was doing like speaking events. If somebody, if I recorded somebody at a speaking conference. Then we would actually, because you're only having that one voice, so that makes a good point. It, it's, it makes it very difficult when you have different languages or accents, especially. Okay. Hmm. I was thinking, do these automatic translations get downgraded in search, like uh, they do? Uh, sorry, uh, transcript, like translations. Uh, Google doesn't like automatic translations. Correct. So probably yeah. don't like automatic transcripts either. Yeah, I also, yeah. Uh, the, the language in them. The language in them is very much like a spun article. You know, they're, they're just peppered with, um, you know, words that um, are just out of place. But it gives you an opportunity to go back and highlight topics, though. In that, uh, the way I used it, I didn't use the entire um, uh, export. From the automation, I basically had it go back into one of my writers, and my writers actually dissected it and then turned it into something that had bullet points on timestamps and everything else. So we used it for a little bit different than what uh, the average person would be kicking it out. And I, I see your point on the article spinning because that's just kind of the same way that whole industry went. Um, and if Google's already pulling the audio out and turning it into context, then it's already doing that for you. Add a good description and titles and timestamps, and you're good. I don't. I don't think uh, there's anything wrong with an automated transcript as long as you uh, edit it, because um, as far as I know, there 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 is no uh, automated uh, tool that is 100% perfect. Um, YouTube has one, but that doesn't work for uh, these hangouts because they are a little bit too long. Um, uh, in Chrome, uh, you can basically send uh, a couple of seconds to uh, uh, to Google, and then Google gives you uh, uh, the transcript. Um, that one doesn't really work well with accents. I, I tried that. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if there are good free tools uh, to do uh, automated uh, transcripts. Yeah, there isn't, and you're right. There is basically that you have to modify it, though, and that's kind of I think the point out we we make out of this is really if you get that automation piece, then go back and modify it to to fit your need, your personality. Add you know the bullet points in. What you know, what else can you add to that that context that uh, will add value to your visitor experience? You know, if it's just a bunch of like jumbled text that came out of the video, well. What's the difference of me just watching the video and actually not having to read it? So, well, even even if those tools are eighty percent correct, uh, it's still a massive job uh, to find that twenty percent and edit it, uh, listen to it. Where was it? Uh, and it depends on what you're doing. If it's just a hangout, then yeah, it's going to be more difficult. But if I'm selling a product and I have somebody standing up and doing a product demo. You know, that makes it a little bit more efficient, where I can just quickly, you know, dissect and then modify. You, know, it, yeah. it you can use uh, you you can use YouTube for that. Uh, they uh, auto auto transcript. Uh, you can download that file and edit it, or you maybe maybe you can edit it in YouTube. I'm not sure, but uh, I haven't played with that piece in uh, YouTube yet. So see, there's things I haven't touched yet. Yeah, and that that also helps for the uh, for the YouTube uh, search engine, and of course for Google search engine, if you have that transcript. Yeah. Good to know. I'll play but with the, it. Those, those product reviews or or those uh, product uh, things, they they're only four or five minutes uh, max, no? So. Yeah, most of my stuff are basically small IDD things. So, a couple, two minutes here, four minutes here, maybe. Mostly like two minutes is going to be on my max, especially if on a product demo. Because otherwise, yeah. people just drop off anyway. Oh, to, 
uh, two minutes. Uh, uh, you can uh, transcript that within an hour, right? Um, but if you have an hour of content, uh, <laughs> we're eight hours, uh, six to eight hours uh, transcribing uh, the whole thing. So. Well, I mean, there's also things where you can u reuse your Hangouts, too, and just grab a snippet of the Hangout and then push that through an editor or, like you said, go through YouTube and pull that piece out for... Uh, you can use it on your website, so you're not actually, you know, grabbing the exact copy, but you're you're moving it so that you have your, your embedded your video, and now you've got some copy that goes along with it. You've got bullet points. You've got links to reference to the e-commerce page. There's, there's a lot you can do with with those type of tagging capabilities and content. Okay, would you guys like um, to go to Green Room? Um, and, um, or, or would you ra rather stay on air? Well, do you want to discuss that? Uh, help out now or because I need to read up on that um, yeah well uh, I, I didn't have actually anything in mind to, to discuss but um, um, I, I, I do like my chats with you guys uh, after we finish the broadcast okay let's finish it then uh, Jim okay well, look, we, we still have a viewer, and um, we'd really like you to join us. Um, we um, um, will put a, a link uh, to this um, uh, Hangout uh, in the SEA Questions community on Google+, Plus in the first post at the top of the page. Um, and um, we thank you for, for sticking with us um, all, all night long. Um, it's... Um, um, Great that, that, that you show an interest in what we're doing. Um, um, your, your interest makes uh, what we do worthwhile. And uh, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do it all again.